introduce myself. I am Count Magnus Lee, at your service. And since you seemed fit to take it upon yourself to trespass into my domain, I must ask for bail. Three cinephiles have come together to bring you strong opinions, controversial statements, epic battles, and plenty of fun. Introducing our host. The man who watches 52 movies a week, drinks 52 beers a movie, loves women but hates the woman. From the foreign land of Canada, our host, Mood 616. He is widely known as the man who talks too much. His worst enemies are Postmaster P and Pee Wee Herman. He said Hellraiser was overrated and Leprechaun Origins wouldn't suck. He's the full-blooded half-Mexican. JP. Finally, we have the man who doesn't talk enough. He is best friends with Sean S. Cunningham. His favorite horror movie is Gummo. He is your favorite Jew and mine, Jeremy. Together, they are known for extending a helping hand to Vampircons everywhere. They are the 22 shots of moods and horror. Yes, yes, y'all, it's going down right now. Episode 162 of the 22 Shots of Moods and Horror podcast is coming at you live. I am your host, the Real Moods Coffee Habu, a.k.a. Moods. Yeah. And, of course, I have my hetero Mexicans by my side tonight. The man who thinks that Trump is a G and would vote for him if he was only a registered voter. Double Liar J, a.k.a. JP. Next up, we have the true voice, the sexy half of Netflix and chill, the woman who loves to rub one out while battling internet trolls, the one and only Carly. And last up, we have the host of No More Room in Hell podcast and Fresh Cuts, who could probably have many more shows if he could just stay awake, the sultry snore, Mike Merriman. What's going on, guys? What up? Yo, yo. Yo. I'm not actually 100% sure I was being factual on the Carly part, but she does like to get very involved with internet trolls on Facebook. So just, yeah, I I stay silent for a while and then like, (laughs) I I think, all right, I'll bite. And then it happens to be like the most psychotic person (laughs) in the world. And then like, I just sit there and think like, oh, well, I'm going to die now. And that wasn't pretty accurate. That actually wasn't a rip on you rubbing one out. It was, it was kind of a diss to them. You know, like they're trying right, to fucking yeah, yeah. start some shit with you, and you're just like, ah, fuck it, I'm gonna rub my little kitty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, um, when you were doing that intro, and you were like, the second one, the sexy person, Netflix and chill. <laughs> I legitimately in my head, I was like, wait a minute, he already introduced me. He's fucking up, <laughs> dude. I, I, I swear to God, I knew you were gonna say <laughs> something God, about that funny. too, man. <laughs> I was surprised you didn't say anything about <laughs> you saying Trump is a G. <laughs> Well, I know that uh, makes Jeremy upset, and uh, I like that. So I was reading through that, and I was pissing myself laughing. I'm like, I'm using that tonight. That's awesome. Because <laughs> <laughs> he totally took that to heart. He's like, what the fuck? Yeah. And, then, and after, I think my favorite part of that whole conversation was you got him going on. You had him going for like 20 minutes, and then you're like, dude, I'm not even registered to vote. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's uh, fucking that's brilliant. <laughs> and then, then he gives me like this like after school preachy lesson like, listen, you should vote who your heart tells you to, but you should register to vote. And I'm just like, you just was yelling at me because I said I'd vote for Trump. Jesus. <laughs> and now you want to get all after school special on me and tell me the importance of voting. <laughs> I hate I hate that. He did that to me once too. <laughs> Right, I know, man. He gets he gets like up in air about politics. It's fucking crazy. But I'm sure I'm sure he knows to go vote, dude. I'm like a troll when it comes to politics. Like some of the stuff I'm saying, I don't even believe in. I just get people riled up. (laughs) To to get Jeremy going, it's insane. So in case you guys haven't noticed, Jeremy is not on the show tonight. Yeah, we (laughs) unless we're just unless we're just doing that shit that your parents used to do as a kid and talk about you while you're in the room. Fuck, you hate that shit, man. Um, but yeah, no, so it's the four of us. Mike, welcome back to the show. Carly, great to have you on again. I believe this is actually, Carly, you were on the last show we did, like 19 months ago or something. Right. <laughs> and then the ones before yeah, that. I just realized like, you're on two Mike. shows in a row. They're spaced out quite a bit, but that's awesome. So yeah, you're on a longer streak than Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> it's an honor. Sweet, sweet. Um, so we do have a little bit of shit to talk about in the intro. First of all, I mean... We are back. We're actually officially back now. Um, I want to say, you know, to everybody out there that's supporting the show and has been asking when we're coming back, 
now we're back. You're listening. So we're back. So yeah. stop asking. Uh, no, for real. So the reason why we have been, you think so they're quiet, still listening? Like, damn it. I wonder when they're coming back. <laughs> uh, we've been quiet because schedules just haven't been matching up. We were supposed to come back the second week in or the first week in September. And JP fucked that up by wanting to watch football or some shit. And yeah. Then, it wasn't even worth it. And then, yeah, actually it really wasn't, but then schedules just weren't lining up again. And hopefully this shit's going to work out after this al- or this album, this uh, podcast comes out. So, and then we'll be able to do more shows because we do have lots of shows lined up. Patreon's back on. We got picks to get to. So that's what we're going to be doing. Yeah. Hopefully. And um, I know we have Italian Horror Month in November, which we haven't really talked about, but I believe we're still doing. Right. I think so. Um, I know that. I only know what I'm picking this year so far. I know Jeremy has picked, um, but yes. hasn't. I'm excited for Italian it. month as usual. Um, well, I mean, I'm not really too worried about it. I mean, we got one week to pick for Italian month. Um, I mean, we generally have at least one quarter of the, the month already picked out because of you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's true. I, I have year. my picks already. We're doing Argento 5, I Whoa. think. Yeah. Argento 5, and it will be Phantom of the Opera, classic, um, <laughs> Sleepless, classic, and what's the other one he did around that time? Phantom uh, of the Opera, Sleepless, and the card player. Card player? It is the card player. Yeah, because then the last ones are Do You Like Hitchcock, Giallo, and Dracula 3D. Oh, man. That'll these, be next year, guys. <laughs> the, these last two yeah. shows are definitely on a hardcore decline. <laughs> yeah, your like, your dude, whole outlook on, on Argento is going to change drastically after watching all these movies. Well, I've already seen Sleepless, and I could tell you I give it a thumbs up. So I've reviewed it on here. I actually, today, for 31 days, I, uh, Card Player was my day four, and I actually did not mind it. Yeah, so, no, that's actually one of the better hey, Argento, ones. You're, you're, you're putting down Argento, and he's already killing it here. <laughs> well, <laughs> listen. Well, I, sl- about that. I wish uh, they would put out an uncut version of Sleepless, though, because it's really cut here. I from think what I I'm pretty sure that there's a there's a European Blu-ray of it that's actually uncut somewhere. I know that Scorpion is working on one. They are, but those companies are very hit and miss of when the shit actually comes out. So, mm-hmm. yeah, they're working on that and Phantom of the Opera. Fan, they're putting out Fan of the Opera also. Oh, goody. Yes. That's an upgrade I don't need to make. Yeah, I hear that that's his, that, either that or Dracula are his worst films. The <sighs> thing with Phantom of the Opera is that he, I think if he had been a little bit more Argento with making that and doing that story, it probably could have been a little bit better, but it seems pretty standard and it's just boring as fuck. <laughs> There's nothing stylistic about that, which is kind of a shame when you're watching. You know, in Argento film, you're looking for that style, you know, mm-hmm. more or less over substance kind of thing. And in, in some of his films, that film right there, I could see a little bit more style over substance. We've seen the story a million times, but that we will get to next year. What are you? Um, what did you pick? Did you pick yet? Uh, I'm still kind of I, I it's between a couple different directors. I'm not sure who I'm going to. OK, go with, so um, we'll pick soon so I can buy the titles. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll and let, then I'll let you know like right away here, and I don't remember who Jeremy went with. Yeah, somebody weird who I never heard of, I think. But um, yeah, I want to say that we should probably maybe get a couple of guests for Italian Horror Month this year, um, especially with our schedules kind of up in the air. Um, it'd probably be pretty fun, so we might even get some guests, which would be cool. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, yeah, and whew, so 1985 show at some point as well. That's on the horizon. Um, I'm really far behind in that. I was really hoping to get that show done this month, but it doesn't look like it, that's going to happen. Mm-mm. So, it's well, gonna... originally we planned for September, so <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, so I'm thinking probably December now. We yeah. obviously can't do it in November, so. And that's pretty yeah. much why I wanted to do it as early as possible because of November. But And then December yeah. is usually a big prep month for us. And I absolutely want to do – obviously, we'll do a top 10 of 2019 at the end, at the beginning of next year. Um, 
But I also really, really want to do a looking back at the decade type of show, like either uh, n- not necessarily like a top 10 of the decade, but maybe just like look at each year, talk about the memories. Cause we started this show pretty early in the, well, I think 2013 is when we started. So um, we've been here for most of it. And then just a couple years that we were there for, I really, I don't know exactly what we're going to do. We'll talk mm-hmm. about that, but I definitely want to do something for the de- end of the decade. So like a top 10 of the decade. No, maybe not a top 10, but like more of like just looking at each year and, and talking about some films that came out. Maybe do like a underrated or something. Maybe I don't know, because I don't want to spoil our other list by doing a top 10. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, we could just do like a top 100 or something. <laughs> <laughs> and put it out right before the other show. <laughs> mm-hmm. Classic. Yeah. Classic material right there. <laughs> There are definitely a hundred films that could easily, like I was even looking at my list and I'm like, holy crap! I'm like, I already have like fifty in the first three years. <laughs> that yeah, I think there, could easily actually, honestly, like man, that. the 2010s was pretty good. There's a lot of good films from each year, so it's actually a little bit more difficult than I was anticipating to break down. Yeah, but um, so the final, I guess the the final little thing is the Patreon. So. Um, I had mentioned, I had mentioned to a few people and Jeremy had mentioned to a few people to just like, listen for our next episode because we we're going to like make some announcement slash changes. Um, and it's not really big changes. Like we're still going to do this stuff. We're still going to open it up to you guys to pick us stuff to review, but we just want to kind of change our layout of how we handle it. So before we used to, um, ask for picks each month and then we would get them in you know we'd ask for them at the first of the month and get them in by the 30th or whatever that just isn't working anymore we noticed it last year or lot before we took the break when moods ran into some personal issues um and it just became a nightmare like not it just became unfun you know when you you had to you had to deal with real life like heavy shit and then you also had to worry about reviewing stuff and it's just it just didn't work you know it, it you it's just something that we're not going to do we're not going to subject ourselves to it which you could say like we probably saw coming but it did mm-hmm. get a little overwhelming i still love doing it like i had so much fun i watched so many things that i never thought i would see um because of the patreon but so we're basically re- removing the time limit. We're going to get to it when we get to it. Um, we're not going to put the pressure on ourselves. We will get to it. We guarantee that. But it's just going to, um, you know, take whatever time. It could be within an episode. It could be within a couple episodes. Um, we will get to it when we get to it. And then the other thing is we're going to reject certain things. So um, we don't really want to do three hour non-horror films anymore you know what i mean so um if it's too you know non-horror or just something that 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 we're really not feeling we'll ask you to pick something else um so we're kind of i guess quality controlling a little bit um i don't think it'll really change too much um, cause it's wasn't not that even so people. much a quality control thing. It's more just about keeping it in the realm of what we still want to have fun doing. Yes. Right. Like we, yeah. we, the show was created to do horror and exploitation essentially, you know, and we've proved that we've done a lot of exploitation and I love exploitation. That's fine. If you keep it in those realms is totally legit, but it, it keeps the, it keeps the freshness. It keeps us kind of, you know, intrigued in the picks and stuff when you're getting things that are really out of left field and just not in the realm of what we set out to accomplish with this show it kind of takes a little bit of steam out of it a little bit. And, Mm -hmm. you know, at that time, you know, like JP said, you know, about us being overwhelmed, not like, I mean that it was, it wasn't so much just the, the, the amount of picks and stuff that we could always do those, but it was just everything that was kind of going on and shit. And we're like, okay, we need to put, that's why taking the the time limit off is really going to help too. Cause I'm sure we're still going to get lots of picks. It's just, Ah, man, shit always seems to come up at bad times. And that was the worst time. If we have like three shows that fall through, because of life yeah we don't want to feel like we are ripping people off or like they they're 
going to be mad. But if we just eliminate the time limit and just be up front like, hey, guys, this can happen, then I feel like everybody will feel better. And also, we've never had a situation where someone was like, hey, you guys haven't done my pick. <clears throat> like, you know, can I get uh, my my money back? And we would do it. We'd be like, yeah, sure. You know, here, take take – Take your money back free of... No, we just had know. the incidents where, you know, I was off for a little bit and people thought I fucking took off with all the Patreon money. <laughs> he, like, skipped town to Mexico <laughs> with his sack full of $100. <laughs> You, you could buy a lot of flats. I did. I bought a lot of flats of beer, man. For all my ca- Canadian yeah. homies out there, we, we were having a pregame discussion about booze and what we call it and shit. And I mentioned... Yeah. Uh, you know, 24 pack being called a flat, and people are like, What are these guys like? What the fuck are you talking about? They thought yeah, yeah. I was talking about a flat tire, a fucking apartments. I don't know, man. But, anyways, um, well, Canadian homies yeah. out there, except for Will, he probably calls it some crazy ass French weird shit. So, whatever. Yeah. Like a freaking short. <laughs> <laughs> that's more like german i guess yeah i was gonna say it sounds a little bit more german yeah (laughs) um anyway like you know so we're just kind of removing the restraints um and we will just uh and and you know this is not something that we haven't kind of done because like sam gave us like i don't know like four or five trilogy shows and we didn't do them all in a month it was like over a six month period of time and he never complained or like you know like he knew we were gonna get to him we got and we got to all of them we did all of his shows um so we will get to him eventually it's just the way that this works is is not always how we want it to like life does get in the way unfortunately and since we don't make enough to make a living at this obviously we have to step into real life whenever real life comes calling um, but yeah, so that, that's really the only major change other than a little bit of, uh, Hey, if that's not horror, don't give it to us or pick something else. Um, and yeah, so I, I think that's kind of it with the Patreon. Uh, anybody who wants to send in picks, um, that, that is, that paid for this month, um, go ahead and send them in now. Um, and then we'll get to them. So yeah. Anything else to add on that? No, that's good. Okay. So, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to message us on the Patreon, and we will uh, try to explain if we didn't go into detail and, uh, you know, work with you. I I think that's pretty straightforward. I mean, I think it's, you know, this is really about, you know, the listeners and, you know, the people that support us, too. We don't want to end up fucking you guys. Yeah. So that was the main purpose behind taking off the time constraint you know mm-hmm. because eventually we'll get to them and you know it also opens up for not having that overwhelming and possible life yeah. shit coming and, you, and you just, just the- you have to you have to almost predict that shit might happen here and there i mean especially now with where our schedules are you know i mean it's it's getting really tough now to to find you know openings in the week to actually record because jeremy's schedule is up in the air every week it's ridiculous right and yeah there's certain days that JP can't record and there's certain days I can't anymore. There's not very <clears throat> many that I can't. It's mainly you two guys who are fucking everything up, but <laughs> <laughs> except for like the first Sunday of, well, the, I would say Jeremy's the, the Jeremy's the worst. See, I could record during the week, but Jeremy can't. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of the big constraint. And Sundays are an issue for me now also because I've got shit going on. So man, it's just, that's just the way life is, man. So stay patient. We will, we will get to your guys' picks and just just ride with mm-hmm. us, man. Just be real. We're going to be and real. And to kind of just comment on that one more time, Jeremy is somebody who gets very stressed out very easy. So, like, if oh, fuck he knows you, JP. That we, <laughs> he knows that if we have, like, if he has, like, 12 picks that he has to do in a month, he'll be so stressed out about it because of the month time limit. And then he'll get them all done, watched in, like, a week. And then I'll be like, why were you so stressed out? And he's like, and, you know, so he's just like that. You, you so I think that'll asshole. help him out. <laughs> All right. uh, so, yeah, that's 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 the update. So, it's on Jeremy. Uh, I just stepped away from the mic just to scream that across the room. <laughs> yeah. And at first I thought, I, at first I was like, is that furniture? Fucking... 
I was like, is that Carly doing a Jeremy impression? Dude, I love when I love when people are talking and you hear this voice from far away come flying in. I always find it comical, man. Yeah. Here's Jeremy though. He's like Yeah. Moving the shit around. He's moving the, the bed. The We're like Got to type. Are you fucking moving your bed and he's like, "Yeah." And he's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> That was actually one of the It was a funny moment, but Jesus Christ, who moves her bed? Yeah. Why? Why? Like, come on, man. Ridiculous. It's almost as ridiculous as that Don Goodman shit that we had going on in the Facebook yeah. group in the summer. Don Goodman? Remember that dude I had that fucking huge battle with? Oh my god, that guy. Oh was yeah, amazing. that guy. That guy that's uh I honestly I thought you were talking about Don and Ellie for a second. No, that Don Goodman guy thinking <laughs> This is what his fucking post it said something to do with eight and a half or eight out of ten is is a masterpiece. And he says that we abuse that by overrating things all the time. Yeah. More specifically me. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Eight out of ten is a masterpiece? And yeah. it just went to like fucking. Yeah, well, 10. his he referenced IMDB. He's like, barely any movies are eight out of ten on IMDB. So that means the, mm. Therefore, they must be masterpieces if they're an eight out of ten. I'm like, do you know how IMDb works? Because it's yeah. not like people always reference it. Like IMDb gave this a whatever. I'm like, no, they didn't. It's like a million fucking random people clicking stars. I know people. I don't think people realize and how it's that an works. Average. It's me and you writing reviews on there. Yeah, that's how they get the fucking final score. Yeah. Same with Rotten Tomatoes. It's the same shit, man. It's people just writing yeah. reviews. It's an average. But it, it, Rotten Tomato is like actual critics apparently. yeah but i mean it's just because you have a title of being a critic does not necessarily qualify you as being a fucking critic yeah who title it, it who, qualifies you as being an asshole yeah like who is the guy out there handing out the critic badges like he's like okay you're a critic you're a critic nope not you you're a <clears> critic <throat> you could be one well it's it's self-proclaimed it, it is man and it's it's such this fucking PC world that we live in right now is absolutely mind blowing. It's insane. <laughs> I went and seen the Joker last night and it was, by the way, it was fan fucking tastic. 10 out of 10. That's my rating. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. It's perfect. It's absolutely amazing on all levels. The narrative is so, the story is so good. This has got to be the best origin story for, well, obviously Joker's ever had, but any, from this kind of realm has ever had before it's just it amazing. just looked very basic to me i was like oh, that's exactly dude. what i would think dude a joker it, origin story would look like oh it's so good man like just how compelling and how brutal it is like but like i mean okay what i was getting to was the violence in it there's not that many scenes with with violence when the violence happens it's pretty brutal but man, all these PC critics out there now are like, you know, calling the Joker like they shouldn't be making films like this. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, man? Schwarzenegger was blowing motherfuckers like 10,000 people up a movie in the 80s and That's shit. Amazing. Right. Like he, there was so much explosion, so much, so much carnage in all these action movies in the 80s and shit like that. And they're making a big deal out of three or four scenes in the Joker. This PC world, man, needs to sit the fuck down and check yourself, man. This shit's been around since the dawn of film. Violence and film. Tell them check themselves before they wreck yeah, themselves. Yeah, you need to chickity check before you riggedy wreck yourself, <laughs> foos. That's how I'm rolling. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. Because censorship is bad for your health. Because censorship <laughs> is bad for your health. Exactly. Good one. Good one. But I mean, I'm just trying to, you know, the contrast between what we were seeing for years and years and all of a sudden this film, which is a big mainstream, you know, it's dealing with something that's very, you know, dear to people in the Batman and joker world and stuff like that and i'm like but it's always been dark someone just did it properly in the way it was supposed to be this movie is insanely dark like his story of his mental illness and all that shit it's crazy man it's just what he's been through and it's gnarly so his actions are pretty much warranted man like you you would expect someone to actually do this shit you know the shit that he's been through and stuff so i don't see how people are fucking seeing this shit the way they are but um I don't know. Maybe this became a fucking critic slash asshole this year. <laughs> but I mean, like I said, this shit's been around for a long time and it's really, it's sad to see people writing shit like that, that this type of shit shouldn't be made. Did they not watch the movie and take it for what Did it you is? see the technical aspects of Joker are unbelievable. It's so good on every level. I couldn't even say one bad thing about it. It's the best movie I've watched in a long time. And it's just it saddens me that people are taking these critics to heart and not going to see the movie. They were expecting it was supposed to do like 80 million or something. I mean, really? Like it's a fucking Joker movie, man. It should be doing a lot more than that. I mean, that's what it was doing. You know, come on. 
<laughs> get with the people, man. Stop when, listening to um, the fucking critics. Dave man. Chappelle put out his stand up and like how fucking critics destroyed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, it was ridiculous. I yeah. thought that shit was funny as fuck, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked it. And the last yeah. Dave Chappelle stand up was oh my god, it was so good. Dude, my favorite part is where he's like, <clears throat> one shot bird shot next shot buckshot he's talking <laughs> about the fucking buckshots and bird shots and he's like goes up to the uh he goes up to the counter of the gun store and they're like he's like which one of these ammunitions do you want and he's like well i don't know and he's like see that one that one won't kill a man <laughs> it's like he already knew <laughs> that, that he's gonna need to kill a man because that's how gun <clears throat> culture is <laughs> I, I think my best part is when he was talking to the executive from the Chappelle show about oh, how, yeah. how he was getting in shit for using the word fag. Yeah. And then he starts walk comes back in and he's like, wait a minute. And then he starts with the whole N word shit. Fuck that was that, yeah. it's like actually <laughs> brilliant. It's like uh, brilliant. Fuck he was so good, man. Yeah, he w- that was a very <clears throat> good stand up. I I I, fuck, and I fucking love Chappelle, so that That's the best that one he's done awesome. since he's come back though, for sure. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, because yeah, I was a little disappointed on his other ones. But yeah, yeah the other one, like that that back to back one was just okay. Yeah, they yeah. were just okay. But this one, he really set his mind to some shit, man, and got clever, <laughs> like really good. He does the best white dude impersonations. <laughs> he does. I've been saying that since the Chappelle show, man. I love when he does white dudes, man, because <laughs> he just he kind of pulls back and his <laughs> just comes. Yeah, <laughs> dude, <laughs> he's so funny. <laughs> it's so fucking good, man. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> uh, I love his white dude impersonations. Uh, anyway, um, so uh, where, where, where were you even talking about? I don't know. I think we were just like moving along. I don't know. But anyways, getting back to the whole thing. But yeah, fuck you, PC critics and you people, man. Stop, oh, yeah. listen, stop listening to these people, man. Yeah. I mean, if you're if you're a film fan and you're a fan of, you know, the DC universe and shit, go see Joker, man. Like, this is crazy to me that people aren't going because they heard it was well, too I mean, violent and shit. Like, what the fuck does that even mean, man? Joker. <clears throat> the news is more violent than this shit. So much anyway. And like Joker is, in my opinion, the greatest villain in the history of villains. Yeah. And when you put this story to it now and like you just kind of put everything in perspective, it's like, holy, f- this guy is just insane. <laughs> he's bad shit, dude. It's awesome. But I agree, man. Yeah. Joker is he's one of the best and iconic. So it's kind of a shame it's not going to do as good as it should, but yeah, yeah, man. So, should we move on to some news? We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Yeah, we got a little bit of news. Nothing crazy. Man, there should be lots, uh, man. We haven't done a show in like four months. I, I, I don't. <laughs> I, I mean, if I took all the news from the last four months, yes, but I don't um, pull all the news. I just pull what happened in like the last week. Okay, sounds good. Uh, so okay, first up here we have a. Um, I guess a announce. I think this was kind of already known, but um, they kind of are confirming it officially now. But so principal photography kicked off about a month ago in Chicago on um, Candyman, which is not directed by Jordan Peele, but produced and I believe written by Jordan Peele, um, which is the newest candy man which i guess is going to serve more of a sequel than a remake um but apparently candy man is it a sequel uh, to the original film or are we just continuing along the same line of doing sequels after a whole franchise has been done to the original films no i think it's <laughs> direct sequel to the original film i don't think they count in candy man so, so that's what they're doing like all these other franchisers they just love doing this you know, making a ton of films for a franchise and then just going, hey, fuck it, man. We're going to slip one right in there, man. <laughs> well, Halloween. Yeah. Did you hear that they're possibly doing that with cha- the next Chainsaw? 
<laughs> but I, I don't even understand that because like like what we said before with you know the the latest Chainsaw movie, which is Leatherface, which is a prequel to the seventy four film. I think, in my opinion, that there's two more films after that that could lead right into the original. Mm-hmm. Why don't they just continue along yeah. with the Leatherface? Well, I don't it's know actually, why they won't continue it, but I know it was one. Good. I liked it too. I thought it was good mm-hmm. too. Um, I think that one of the reasons why they won't is because a different company ended up with the rights to it. Again. Oh my god! Here we go again. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I mean, if that so. if that's the issues, but I mean, if say there wasn't that issue, doesn't it make sense to just continue along that and then just go from there once you tie it into the original film? Um. Yeah. No, I thought that we could have had a much more middle ground from where they went with Leatherface. I think it would be awesome. You have three, like you have three movies leading up to the original chainsaw. Like that would be fucking awesome quadrilogy right there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Wishful thinking, right? So, well, that's kind of what they're doing with, uh, the alien franchise. If they end up making another one, right? Cause they had Prometheus and then, yeah, the fuck is it? Covenant. Some- Covenant, Covenant, yeah, and then I think there's supposed to be one more if it ever happens. Yeah, I Covenant think that, trash, more like it. Yeah, Covenant, Covenant, <laughs> so, yeah, and like, that was, Covenant was such a such trash bags, man. Yeah. That movie yeah. sucked. So I'm I'm not really bad. hoping that they're gonna. Get, I don't. They probably will, but who fucking knows? Mm-hmm. But yeah, so to touch on that because since I brought it up, yeah, Fetty Alvarez is producing it. Um and Hankel <laughs> from Chainsaw Four is also producing it. Oh um, wow! Yeah. You want to hear something funny? They, I actually what? picked up the Screen Factory Chainsaw Four today. Nice. Chainsaw I, I don't Four even, I don't as even, in the next, the new generation or yeah, next generation, yeah, or whatever the fuck. The fucking um, Matthew Mc, Matthew McConaughey, <laughs> Renee Zellweger. Yeah, classic, yeah. classic film. Yeah, with the fucking transvestite uh, <laughs> Leatherface. <laughs> Yeah, that was fucking interesting the first time I saw it. Yeah, oh boy. So, um, yeah, that that is, a, I guess, happening happening for uh, Legendary Entertainment, um, I believe. And, dude, I don't know. So they're doing a sequel to the original with that. But, like, think about this timeline. You have Chainsaw 1. You have Chainsaw 2, which is a direct sequel to 1. You have Chainsaw 3, which, like, ignores Chainsaw 2. Yeah. And then you have Chainsaw 4, which ignores Chainsaw 2 and 3. Well, Part 3 is kind of like, I don't know, like a, it's almost like a remake of the first one. Just set in its own little world. Yeah, but they, but they refer, if you was the t- opening title scroll is like, what's <laughs> what's <laughs> important. And it, it, it kind of is a sequel still. Chainsaw I guess, 4. I, I get, yeah. Chainsaw 4 basically discounts Chainsaw 2 and 3, um, but says that, you know, something like that did happen or something. Chainsaw and 4 then, is straight satire, though. That that movie's a big joke. Dude, I hate that movie. I, think the back uh, of the I don't hate it. I hate, I hate it more when people, like, if it's a joke, it sucks even worse. It is. Like, and that's, and that's what thing. makes, that's why the movie's even worse than people make it out to be, because it's supposed to be fucking fun. I mean, hence the, I've always said this, man. I mean, if you weren't trying to do a satire version of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, why would in the he- why in the hell would you ever make Leatherface a fucking transvestite? Mm. It makes no sense to me, right? I mean, that to me just seems like you're really just mocking the originals and satire and shit. But, but I mean, and then well, I guess because it's based on Ed Gein, he wore women's skin and stuff like that. But for sure, no. um, then you have Chainsaw, the two remakes, which are the only like. Some of the best continuity in the series, <laughs> the remake and the prequel. Um, and then you have the direct sequel to the original. So they've already done this in uh, Texas Chainsaw 3D. Ugh. Then you have Leatherface, which is a prequel to the original. So you have one, two, three, four, <clears throat> five, six different timelines. <laughs> Well, it's still not as confusing as the Halloween franchise. Is put no, it it's less. It's less confusing, I think. <clears throat> yeah. Because Halloween, you have like three timelines, but Chainsaw, you have six. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, speaking of how, oh, so yeah, the the Tony Todd is apparently in the new Candyman. <clears throat> so, and it's supposed to be a sequel. 
Yeah, but I don't think he's playing Candyman. Yeah, I don't think he's playing Candyman either. He's just in it. Well, that that's what makes it more confusing, though. If it's if it's actually a sequel, like a direct sequel to the original film, and you got Tony Todd playing a different character, what is this American Horror Story? Well, no, because think about it. Candyman is an essence. He doesn't age, right? So he shouldn't be, because he would be like a hundred and something in the first Candyman, because he died mm. forever ago. Yeah. So I think that they'll keep him looking the same but maybe i don't know i don't know how what they're going to do with him if it's just going to be a cameo or maybe he's playing candy man's dad or something <laughs> <laughs> candy candy man's dad it's, that's the whole gimmick around that <laughs> it's so confusing <laughs> but that man comes Senior. out june 12 2020 so just wow. next year you have to say candy man 10 times because he's so old he can't hear <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, that's good <laughs> that is good. Um, okay, so what else do we have here? <clears throat> uh, it was announced that <clears throat> Jordan Peele's next two films that he's writing and directing will, in fact, be with Universal Pictures because he had a five-part deal. So Get Out, Us, and I believe Candyman is the third. So he'll have two more films with Universal. Hmm. Has he come out and said anything at all about wanting to stick with the horror genre for now? Yes, he actually said in Fangoria issue number three that he um, he has uh, he said um, that he was planning a horror film that they aim to be scarier than Get Out and Us. So that's he's still doing horror. Cool. That sounds good because I mean I would imagine because his films kind of have crossover appeal or at least critical crossover like uh positivity uh you you're i'm assuming like you know studios are gonna start wanting to snatch him up for non-horror as well mm-hmm. so it's, it's kind of cool that you know stick with horror you know for the time yeah being. i think this next film for both him and ari aster is like crucial to me because both of them are two for two but um ari aster needs to do something that's not a cult film next mm-hmm. so that I could see what else he could do. Um, and Jordan Peele, I think, is great. And he's um, both of his films are different enough but still have some similar qualities to them. I'm just really curious to see if he could do it a third time. He should just do the new Chainsaw sequel. <laughs> <laughs> or, or like the new Halloween. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, okay. God. Then we have some Halloween news. Uh, so they, b- since we've recorded the last show, they've announced two Halloween films, um, with probably yeah. the worst titles in Halloween film history. Yeah, I remember what one of them was. But yeah, I'm trying to Halloween think. Halloween kills. Yeah, Halloween, Halloween kills, kills is the one I. I Halloween remember. is going to kill people. <laughs> yeah, that's what I keep thinking. I picture. Like the Literal season of Halloween. Halloween. Like you just wake up that day and die. Because of <laughs> <laughs> and then the so in twenty yeah. tw- October twenty twenty, it's we all have supernatural Halloween and kills. shit. <laughs> like they like it doesn't stuff. even have Michael Myers in it. It's just fucking some kind of weird fucking curse or some shit. <laughs> it's the holiday of Halloween. Isn't about time they make another Halloween without Michael Myers in it though? Halloween shit. kills. Yeah, Listen, that, cool. that would be really funny if. So they announced Halloween Kills for October 16, 2020, and then Halloween ends in October 2021. It would be really funny if Halloween Ends wasn't a Michael Myers film. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. You know the way you could do that, man, Halloween Kills? some You kind of use the same premise as part three. You know, this company, this corporation that's creating these masks that kills kids and shit. Use the same type of thing. <laughs> But you have them. Yeah, I guess su- Halloween's technically killing. Yeah, so you, you technically, so you have this company that kind of does something to the candy and shit. It gets dispersed around, you know, the world. Blah blah blah. Kids go trick or treating. They get this candy, and Halloween kills them. There's your movie. <laughs> Boom. So um, the news is that um, <laughs> JP just loved that, and so um, <laughs> I just don't think that that premise, the the Halloween mask thing, would ever work today either. I know that's what weren't what you was saying, but um, well, clearly, yeah, I don't clear, know. Clearly, I, clearly I, I was joking that, around, but yeah, um, the 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 cast. I don't even know who this is. Um, Nancy Stevens, who uh, portrayed Nurse Marion Chambers in the original film. 
um, is returning to Halloween. You don't kills. know who that is. No. Like you don't <laughs> know who she is in the movie, or yeah, who is she in the movie? Like the she's the lady at the beginning of the film with Loomis, and like they're driving in the car to go pick him up, and then okay. she's in H two O. Right? Am I wrong? I think yeah, no, one... you're right. Yeah. yeah. In which movie hard. is that? In the first one, and then when, the second one, she returns. When he smashes his hand on the side oh, window. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's smoking yeah, she's all the time. she's in three of the Halloween. That's yeah, right. Yeah, she's an H two O as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Damn, how old I don't is know, she I guess now? So. I'm not. Listen, when you if you want to talk Friday, I'll know who characters are. Like if you're like Ethel, she was in Friday Farm. I'm like, yeah, of course she was. I love Ethel. When it comes to Halloween, like I don't know who any of these people are. Yeah, I'm a uh, ha- I'm a Halloween fan. I grew up with. Halloween. Isn't it weird that every time I watch Hall- or uh, Friday Five, I always want to eat what she's cooking? <laughs> the stew. Yeah. I know because there's mean, a lot. Of, there's a lot of fresh vegetables. Because sometimes those hillbillies yeah. they make some good fucking slop slash They're gumbo or on their own vegetables and shit. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, maybe it's like a motel health thing, just... man. They're harvesting people out there too. Yeah, I just dumb. Friday Five. <laughs> Friday Five is such a classic. Oh, oh wow, that's that's a strong word for hell. Or why do I keep saying Halloween? Fuck Halloween, Friday Five. <laughs> Jesus, I, I, I mean, it's I get like so frustrated with Halloween. I I think it's because Fucking I can't Halloween. stand Halloween fanboys. I yeah. said it, man. I've said this a million times. Halloween fanboys are the absolute fucking worst. Carly's a Halloween fanboy. You, like, you say uh, anything whoa, whoa. bad about how any of the Halloween films, they're down your throat and up your ass. Down your throat and up your ass? That makes no sense. Same I would say an out your ass. And, they uh, meet in the middle? Yeah, and th- they just, they get so fucking <laughs> Yeah, they meet in the middle and the give belly each other button. fucking Halloween hand jobs. Well, the point is, they get absolutely fucking bent out of shape butthurt over anything negative you say about Halloween. Like, you know, when the new Halloween fi- film came out, yeah, I was that's like, Sam. I didn't really Sam's care for a it. fucking Halloween just fan. Just fucking fuck. up and down me. Like, you can you can talk these guys. Anybody can talk shit about Friday films and Nightmare on Elm Street films, and those hardcore fans are like, all, they literally shrug their shoulders. Like, okay, you don't like it, whatever. Going with my yeah. fucking day. Halloween fans, no. You know, they're they're going for the knife and they're they're trying to put that shit in you, man. Yeah. But yeah, like I know the Halloween movies are not that great. Like. But growing up, it's a nostalgia thing now. Like I, I can get watch that. Watch, I can even watch Resurrection and yeah. be like, like no. But the thing is, I watched Halloween films growing up too. Like I was watching Halloween films when they were coming out. For fuck's sakes, right? Yeah, that's how I old I am. But <laughs> yeah, and you know, I don't have this because I just didn't think they were that good. I mean, to be honest, Halloween four and five are two of the most overrated fucking movies. I mean, Halloween five apparently people have I think are trying are finally seeing the light on that one. The movie really sucks. Yeah. but they're not like Halloween four isn't that great. Right. Yeah, no, I never thought see, four was that thing. great either. Yeah, four but for a while, is not that great. But like, there is that four has like some of the best Halloween atmosphere in the opening, and mm. it's worth watching alone for that. Oh, for sure. Like, I mean, there's there's definitely <laughs> strong points to the film, but overall, it's not great. I mean, the mask is terrible. The whole movie, dude. Is the really... mask is god awful. Yeah, and I mean that's a big thing to Halloween fans. I mean... Shoulder pad Myers. That's the shoulder. <laughs> pad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're He's Halloween ready fan, for the big game, you know the yeah. difference between every single mask, you know, in all the movies and shit like that. Like, I can't even. I mean, I can tell the Halloween four one because it's just atrocious. But uh, you know what I'm saying, right? But, well, there's only two good ones in the entire original run. It's Halloween one and two and six. I guess that would be three, but I think they use the same mask in Halloween. Halloween two. six. Where do you come off saying Halloween six is good? <laughs> no, the mask. Oh, the mask. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. the yeah, mask. The, yeah. So one and two have good masks, and then the only other one is six. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the masks in part three are better than half the other ones. <laughs> 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 um but no um yeah eight, the, eight more days till halloween kills halloween very... kills fuck i'm Ugh. not excited about halloween kill i, I mean get... i am i'm excited to see another halloween film i always will be but i'm not happy with where the story went in halloween 18 so. yeah me too no I, I really hope they continue this rambo fucking lorry though man that's amazing like, I don't mind that as much as you because it makes sense <laughs> narrative wise. It seems so. Uh, okay. it, see, it to me, it seems ridiculous. That's because you don't live in America where we have guns and and can defend ourselves. I don't know. Man. Jamie Lee. Jamie Lee. Bronson. Dude, we have guns and can defend ourselves too. We just choose not to shoot I, everybody I that says, says a bad thing to us. Ridiculous for her to be 
fo- like like a fucking Burt Gummer s character paranoid. I don't know, man. I mean, you got to look at it this way. It's 40 years later. I mean, I get that she was terrified at one time, but 40 fucking years is 40 fucking years, man. That's a long goddamn time to kind of release a little bit of that pent up aggression. I mean, Christ, well, man. Sp- sp- Especially it would if make more sense went if Rambo she actually style. went through all the other films. Well, that's the yeah. thing. That's then the she thing. would be yeah. like, "That's my point, She'd dude. Like, this is a direct he, sequel he to the original after film." Me like six times. Yeah, yeah, if they're if if they're doing it as they're erasing everything that made him, you know, build up this huge legacy, it's like, well, then why is she still fucking? Dude, yeah. why is she on her mind? Don't even She's have over a paranoid. Aspect either. I mean, forty yeah, years I, later, I actually don't like that. People who say that they like it, they took out the family aspect and the. It, then if it, this whole fucking movie feels forced as fuck because yeah. it's like there's this supposed to be like you in your head think of this long history between the two but really they just met each other one fucking time <laughs> I know, right? 40 years ago <laughs> yeah, and he killed what three of her friends before? yeah yeah but th- that's that's like, my they whole even point discount halloween 2 which is like even then i'd be like okay that was fucking a long bloody night but you know what i mean like <laughs> halloween 1 killed three of her fucking friends had like a 15 minute interaction with him in a fucking yeah. house. So theoretically, <laughs> theoretically, this gets even fucking worse. You'd prove my point even, f- even more. Yeah. Original Halloween uh, film. Uh, and then the Halloween 2019 is 40 years later after half a fucking night. It's only half the night. Part two is the other yeah. half of the night. If well, this movie had like, taken yeah. place half after night he came home, <laughs> yeah. at, least, at least if they were in the part they're actually two, because, lying to yeah, you on the tagline. got shot. They're lying yeah. to you on the tagline. It's, it should be half the night he came. Yeah, exactly. At least the added in night of part two would make a little more sense because it's like the dude got shot six times and still was coming after her. So that would leave big, a bigger yeah. imprint in her yeah. head. Exactly. In my this point. version yeah. of Halloween, he's like a fucking regular ass man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's just like, there's no, it's just like if somebody broke into your house and, and tried to kill you or whatever, it, like you see that happen on the news and stuff. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I think that, I, I hate that they retconned everything. You know what I mean? I can see why they don't want to have fucking seven sequels and like the continuity was so fucked, the Thorn thing and all that. But I feel like you could have oh, like made a way for some of it to work and still have that history there. Hell, even do Halloween 1, 2, and H2O, right? Like, mm-hmm. just leave a reference to Josh Hartnett that he fucking grew up and married some chick and moved to Africa or something. You know what I mean? Did you but, see who's playing Tommy Doyle in Halloween Kills? Anthony um, Michael Hall. Anthony Michael <laughs> yeah, fucking who Hall. Is that? <laughs> I'm at Breakfast Club. Uh, dude. Breakfast Club. That's fucking Anthony weird Michael science, Club. dude, man. Yeah, yeah. weird science. He's in him. a lot of. Uh, He's in yeah a lot of uh, fucking John. Which Hughes one is he in the Breakfast Club? The Brian. nerd. He's he's the dorky uh, one. He's that's the nerdy the one. Character. He's the blonde kid in Weird Science. Yeah, but it's Michael Anthony Hall, man. He's, uh, he's in 16 Candles, right? He's yeah, a, he plays a dork. Probably. Yeah. That, yeah. I like that one the best. He did look like... He was a dork in the 80s, pretty much. So. Yeah. He was always like the younger character. Like, yeah. it'd be like the seniors and juniors, and he'd always be like the freshman or something. They uh, Didn't they ask... Paul Which is Rudd funny too, because I first? think he was just as old as everybody else that was playing the seniors, but he just looked <laughs> younger. <laughs> Dude, in weird science in that scene in the bar, that shit was legendary when he got drunk. <laughs> yeah, I just was, watched uh, weird science again. Actually, not too did, didn't they show. ask Paul Rudd first to do the uh, Tommy Doyle so. character? Which makes even less sense because we're supposed to be ignoring the fact that Halloween Six happened. Well, that would yeah, that's probably why he wasn't asked because that would just confuse the hell out of people. No, they asked him. He said he turned it down. Well, why would they ask him? Because that's just straight up confusing. <laughs> wasn't the original Tommy Doyle you're, like you're suppo- hurt that you're already he wasn't ag- asked? yeah you're already ignoring these all these films so you can't bring back the actual actors that played these characters. <laughs> yeah, that's just what, again. This is, what is this American Horror Story? Like, come on. Yeah, well, that, that, that makes sense know that every fucking form. season is like a different, like an entirely different story. This but is the same character, the same but same story. actors. Yeah. yeah, I know. See, I mean, it's this Halloween franchise is an absolute mess. <laughs> I just am hoping that they do something be- better than they did in the last one, man. Because like I liked certain aspects of it, like that scene where he's like that long shot where he's like looking through the window and then like goes in the house and. Like that, that long kill and stuff like that. That was good. There was some great atmosphere in it and stuff, but 
the more I watched it, I think twice now. And the second time I hated some of the decisions in that movie, like, like literally hated them. I still mm-hmm. don't think it's a horrible movie, but as a Halloween film and a Halloween sequel, I'm just like, why did they do this? It just mm-hmm. feels wrong. So yeah. And, and uh, there are people that fucking love it too. And I, I fucking question their saying, dude, I've been seeing rankings lately. Cause you know, it's, October, it's Halloween time, so people got to do their Halloween franchise rankings and shit. And I've been seeing Halloween 19 coming in like second, third, fourth on oh, this. I'm God. like, holy shit, dude. Like, well, I, I kind of can see why people would put it ahead of like four, five, six. You I know, can see it being seven, ranked fourth, but eight, not but no higher than fourth for me. Ha- I, I, the people that are saying it's better than Halloween 2, the oh, original fuck. one. Oh. Well, that was my point. I actually saw a list. I think it was yesterday on Instagram, and somebody had it second on their list. They had the original yeah. Halloween, and I've they seen had nineteen it. second, it and then I, I think the third one was Halloween four. It was like really weird, man. Strange. The, to me, there's four Halloweens that I think are genuinely like great, and that's um, Halloween, the original Halloween two, Rob Zombie's Halloween, and then. I guess I would throw Halloween three in there, even though I do think it's kind of not the it's not the greatest movie, but I like it a lot. <clears throat> well, yeah, if I'm we'll going to watch a Halloween film, I'm watch. watching Halloween three every time. <laughs> uh, I like Halloween two. I've Halloween two has kind of been my go to lately. Mm. But hmm. anyway, hmm. that's Halloween kills and Halloween ends. <laughs> uh, Those are amazing titles. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now yeah, this, I, yeah, you, you know, know it's going to happen. Halloween Ends is going to come out, and then two years later, there's going to be another sequel. Halloween Ends? <laughs> why, why didn't they just? Why don't they just do the cliche thing and call it the final chapter? Because <laughs> then they're going to have Halloween, Halloween a lives. new beginning. Well, then it opens up the door to have Halloween End. Because there could be, I don't know. <laughs> well, at the end, well, of, at the, at the end of the movie, it's just. I think end sounds a little day, bit more. So it's November first. Yeah, a little more for real than final chapter. Because there well, could be something kind of, after the final chapter. What's kind of interesting about these two Halloween films is it would actually make. It would be the first time we've seen one of these sequels to the original that actually ended up continuing. Right, it always is like one and done. Mm. So, if anything, I'm happy for that. That at least they're fucking continuing the same damn story. Yeah, because Judy Greer's in it, right? She's already been cast as the daughter still, so they're continuing something. I hated her the most in the new movie. I couldn't stand her. Yeah, Yeah, she's All right, so Halloween is a mess of a franchise, but one franchise that is not a mess. And in fact, all... Yes. All six (laughs) movies are good. We're talking Tremors. So. We've come to the conclusion on on this amazing podcast of Twenty Two Shots of Moves and Horror that, oddly enough, for you know, we 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 sometimes like to think outside the box, you know, get away from the Fridays and the nightmares and the Halloweens, and actually be real about shit. And we've come to the decision that Tremors might be the most solid franchise out there. <clears throat> yeah, it, it has no bad films. Is. <laughs> How many um, franchises which, out there don't have any bad films in them? Name me one besides Tremors. Especially one that's over like four films. You know, we're talking six here. You know? Psycho's Show up me there one too. that just has four great films. Unless you dis, But it's kind of hard no, to discount. No, you can't. You can't because there's a remake that sucks. I and know. the Bates Motel TV, series, TV movie sucks. It sucks, but it's fun. At least it's better than some I've never Halloween seen show. it. I just assume it's. Oh, sucks. fuck this guy. <laughs> no, Bates oh. Motel doesn't suck. This not, the TV, the not the TV show, the TV movie. Oh, the TV okay. movie, the one that came out in the, the 80s or whatever. Yeah, yeah. The 80s, or the 90s. or I think it was in the early 90s, actually. Phantasm 5 sucks. Ravager. I can't say it fucking sucks. It's not great. I didn't say it's it disappointing. fucking sucks. I just said it sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. You didn't curse. Either. But. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Phantasm and Psycho are up there for the more legitimate, solid, just, you know, quality of good films. Right. Mm. Yeah. With Tremors. I think, I mean, really. Well, tre- but I still don't count Psycho, though, because it has a bad film in it. Right. So, like, where's a franchise that doesn't have a bad film? Yeah. Well, if you want to stick with the original question, I was trying to go a little off base. and Which uh, which Saw do you, do you think's bad? Like, bad, bad. Uh, seven. Seven. Oh, seven. Seven probably would be Jigsaw. It. Yeah. What? How many? What is there? Eight now? Jigsaw. I didn't like the last I, couple. No, are I bad. like. I like Jigsaw. Fuck off. I don't think it's that good, man. 
Carly liked it too. We had so much fun in that theater watching Jigsaw. Just just put it this way, I, man. I did. After we recorded that, actually, the Saw franchise is one of the only franchises that we actually recorded in bits because when you watch more than like two Saws in a <laughs> row, it gets so fucking jumbled in your mind of <laughs> what's going on because the story is crazy. There's like three movies, and then there's like five prequels. It's crazy. Yeah. So, I just watched uh, Saw one in the theater a couple days ago. That's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never, I yeah. Never got no, it was it. It was a fun experience, honestly. Um. Anyway, so Tremors. Um. Oh, a funny thing about Tremors. So I was just on the, and I meant to shout this out at the beginning. Are you actually uh, talking about Tremors? Were, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just said I, that just jokingly. <laughs> yeah. No. Nice. But uh, uh, so give me a second here. Um, Tremors. Uh, we were on the, I, I, I didn't get to shout this out at all since, cause we haven't had a show, but I was invited by Duncan, um, from podcast under the stairs to take part in this summer series, which is a top 10. Oh, I got a bone to pick with you guys about that shit, man. What, what what's the best in the mother fuck happened in 94? Dude, listen. Okay. Duncan, I know, you know, what you know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't you? Yes. Cemetery man. How in the, f- that's literally might even be one of the best films of the 90s legitimately no duncan the host of the show it was his number one film of the 90s yeah well i, and, I, I agree well i mean that's pretty much so what mine is how it works is there was a rant there was like 15 podcast hosts from all different places that yeah. dave and jerry were on there um who you guys might know i was on there and then a bunch of people i didn't know um Andrew from Fry Gay the 13th was on there. Shut the fuck uh, up. It's called Fry Gay. Yeah, I think it's about like Do they rev- gay tell me spec- that they review four gays on there? No, I don't <laughs> think so. Um and so there's all these different shows and all these different hosts. I got to work with people I never worked with before. Um Jamie from um Skeleton Crew and and uh, ABC's a hidden horrors on there, but we, uh, th- he basically randomized the years. So he would pull a year out of the, out of the hat. And like, let's say it was like 1996. Then he would pull three names out and those would be the hosts on 1996. Funny enough, Dave Z got 96, <laughs> which he did on our show. Yeah. And if you listen to the episode, he said he met, he references 22 shots about 600 fucking times. <laughs> it's true. He's so like, what? well, 22 shots. <laughs> so, I mean, we got so much free promotion. So really, I mean, what did that end up being? Scream number one kind of thing. They had actually, it was, so how it works is, uh, you have the, all the hosts randomized. I got luckily randomly 98 and 99 with Jerry. Jerry was on both episodes with me, um, which was really fun. Uh, so after you get the hosts, you have to, all the hosts come up with four films each from the year. So let's say we're doing 98. We each pick four films. That's 16 films. Uh, cause there's four of us. So then we have to whittle it down to 10. And how we do that is each of us get to pick two that automatically go in, no questions. So, for example, I would pick like Blair Witch and uh, for 99 and, uh, you know, fucking audition or something. Yeah, try and um, think of, of another one exactly, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, you have two. So each host gets to pick two that go in. So that's eight total. And the two leftovers have to be debated on and agreed upon by the four hosts the two remaining films then you record an episode and you review all 10 films and at the end of the episode you debate which are the two best that need to go into the finals and you know then you have a basically everybody like ranks all 20 films that were selected from uh worst to best and they get points how we do it with the end of the year thing and they go into uh, uh, you have a round table at the end where like a couple, like five hosts are on the episode and you all debate and discuss and stuff like that. So when Duncan did 94, him and I think Doug Tilly both were in favor of Cemetery Man. They're like going into this. I didn't even think there would be a debate. I thought the clear cut winner was Cemetery Man and we would debate like what the second film is. But um, the other two hosts like hated it. They hated Cemetery Man. So they got kind of overpowered, and <clears throat> that was it. So and, it, and who were these other hosts? 
losers <laughs> how do you hate Samus? I, I'm, I'm just mind blown by that yeah no it was it was mind blown it was the shockingest shocking thing that happened all uh season besides wow. jerry me backstabbing jerry on perfect blue so in the 96 show what was the what were the, the top two scream and oh so, so how it works uh, i forgot to mention that it that you pick the two the hosts agree on the two it was scream and the craft but this the year craft. he did yes all four hosts like love the craft that which i do too top, so. that didn't even make my top 10 in 96 i know i know <laughs> yeah so um and thesis was third i think oh that's good but um so but then there was like a flip side to this so this year he got three adjudicators that if they feel like an injustice has been done they can swap out one of the movies in which case they swapped out the craft for from dusk till dawn and then those two movies are put up in a poll with the remaining, you know, 12 hosts or whatever who weren't on the episode and they vote and decide which one is the appropriate choice. So from dusk till dawn got all the votes and that became the representative uh, when the craft got bounced out. Um, OK, so I think you lost me at uh, when you got 98 and 99 with Jerry. <laughs> no, so it was looted. Just Dude, who convoluted. came up with these rules and regulations? Like this, it. it sounds like somebody wrote a manuscript of rules it and is. shit. This is crazy. Is. Well, this keep in mind, this is his fourth year doing it. He did the seventies, eighties, um, it, or he, this is like sixth year, but third year with the the top ten of the decade thing. He did two other ones Man, before that. You totally know that um, there's a bunch of people that were on that show that have no idea how it works. They were just talking some shit. <laughs> listen. Next year, it's going to be even bigger and crazier. We're talking, we talk, I talked to him a little bit, talking about getting more adjudicators, like more hosts. It's going to be fucking nuts. And it deserves to be because the 2000s are insane. But uh, yeah, it was one of the funnest things I've ever done. Like Jerry almost killed me on our, on, on 98. Like, because it came down to ring the, not, the the Japanese. How one. did you guys the even faculty, have ten films from '98? Like that just seems crazy to me. There was actually quite a few good ones. We had like Lake Placid and uh, Deep Blue Sea. Well, these are debatable. The Idle Hands. <laughs> no, I liked all the movies that were there. Um, but it came down to Perfect Blue, uh, The Faculty, and Ring. And Jerry was blowing perfect blue. I was so going to say, much. he's obviously perfect blue, man. Because that movie yeah. really is. And I wanted the faculty, which I got. So it came down to ring and perfect blue as the second choice. Well, what choice. did you think of perfect blue when you watched it? Oh, I really liked it. I yeah. liked it more than ring. But I just felt like the ring was more of a better representative for the year. Because I feel like it did more for horror. But So I went with ring and then he fucking hated me. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny but yeah dude it was so fun i recommend next year because duncan just takes volunteers next year whenever um he does the uh opening for the 2000s it, pff, get on board i, I want i know mike is wants to get on board but it is, is he gonna be so doing this shit during the summer again or what yeah, it's the summer every yeah, year see, like, um, there's just no series there's absolutely no way I know you like i'm time. just yeah, well, the summer's the to, worst time. To be of fair, year. you only have to be scheduled for three episodes. And it my first one was in like July or something, and then my next one was in like the August, and then my last one was last weekend. So it was only it was like big span of time between the episodes. Oh, that's why we didn't record last weekend. That's good to know. No, you guys Priorities you can't do anymore, dude. Priorities. <laughs> I don't know why I just said priorities like that. That sounded really. <laughs> um. Anyway, back to the news. <laughs> I, I checked the podcast under the stairs summer series out, dude. It was so much fun. That sounds you'll, like it's you'll fun. hear me. Yeah. I killed it. Our episode. Listen to this. Our episode ninety eight is the most downloaded episode. I'm just saying that I brought the twenty two shots love and well, that's if because you people... be, if you want to be big, just get me on your show. That's because <laughs> oh god, but not so... nothing can save fresh cuts. Obviously, again, remember we used to call this guy the humble one. Oh, for fuck's sakes, <laughs> got lying through his fucking Mexican teeth. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, you, the reason why 98 was so downloaded is because everybody was curious to see what films actually made the fucking list. 
It's no, that would be 99 or 97. Oh, yeah. 90, <laughs> like, is there, like, how do you even do Dave 10 was films on, in 97? Dave Z was on 97. <laughs> oh, man. So what was the number one film from 97? Do you remember? Um, Because 97 is a, is a truly disaster of a year. It's uh, oh, don't t- I can't remember what, what, what came out in '97. I know what you did last summer came out in '97. I think no, it was that. It was something good. Well, yeah, I did. Wasn't saying it was good. You know my feelings on that. I hate that movie. I can't remember what came out, but I had a list of everything. But in yeah, fact, it I was. Think the third I was one. very. Oh, but the whole fucking reason I brought this up, I totally forgot, is me and Jerry flipped shit. So not only did Tremors not make the number one or number two spot. In 1990, it didn't even get a fucking seat at the table. It wasn't among the 10 films that were selected to take part in the debate. It mm. didn't even get on board. I was, We were so pissed off. We're like, it's the best creature feature of the 90s. So again, so how does Tremors not make a list? And then what because makes the list? Because you had a bunch of fucking morons on that episode. <laughs> yeah, apparently. apparently. I think everybody uh-huh. that was on that episode took the fucking short bus to the uh, studio that night. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we we went off on the round table whenever me and Jerry got to speak um, because we just thought it was a fucking travesty. They had <laughs> that. That is pretty weird for 1990. They had fucking I forget <clears throat> what the film was that they had, but I was like, dude, you got fucking this and you don't got tremors. I mean, 90 is a bet. One of the better years. Um, there are some better films from 1990. I know Duncan had uh, picked Fauci's Cat in the Brain, which I think they had, like Puppet was the Master best. fucking two on there, some shit. I think that was nice. Uh, they had <laughs> the, like uh, Frankenhooker was on there, which I think <clears throat> I love Hen and Lauder and Frankenhooker, but come on, it's Tremors, dude. Yeah, I mean that's a film that's in our Hall of Fame. Yeah, and not even yeah. to get a seat there. Well, it's the way yep. she goes, man. Luck of the so, luck, luck of the draw, I guess, or not luck of the draw. Anyway, uh, the news filming begins next month on Tremors 7 starring Michael Gross, uh, which I am super pumped on. Um, Gross will reprise his role as Burt Gummer in Tremors 7. Is Jamie Kennedy back? The, I, I don't know, actually. The actor <laughs> confirmed on his Facebook page this week that the film will begin shooting in November. Gross wrote on his Facebook page, 30 years ago, I was on location for the original Tremors film. And in a month's time, I will be in Thailand begin filming tremors seven three decades and i'm grateful of so many tremors fans for the fun ride the title is reportedly tremors island fury the deadly graboids are back illegally brought to a new island resort by a rich playboy looking for a trophy hunt that's actually not a bad plot line like some rich people trying to trophy hunt and they're they're like you know instead of lions and shit they're like oh let's do Let's Big ass fucking... worms, yeah, yeah. I mean, Gravel, hunting yeah. lions and fucking giraffes and shit gets a little bit old. Let's hunt worms. Yeah, well, you figured that for the people who are really who into hunting, that would be the biggest. <laughs> Why did I that say would be like the bags? biggest game you can get? Right, <clears throat> fucking graboids. Yeah, exactly, man. That's a good premise. <clears throat> I fucking love. I love the fucking Tremors movies, dude. I just fucking do. They're great. I love the like. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all good. They're all good movies. So I agree. Set I agree. They're coming fun. out. Keep making them, buddy. Uh, we have to do another um, ra- franchise roundup because a bunch of stuff has come out <laughs> that we haven't. Um. Well, I th- I know. Well, I guess we don't really have to do the the pup. Are we going to do the Pup Master one? Um. Because it's not actually oh. part of that franchise. Well, there's that new one in production right now. It's the Blade spinoff, so we'll have to probably do that. Okay, because the the new one, the Buck, what's it called? Something Reich. I don't know. But it's like the start of a new franchise, so that's kind of yeah. What well, other ones do we have to do? I'm trying to think right now. Um, Leprechaun. Oh yeah, Leprechaun. Two two Leprechauns. <laughs> oh my. God. Leprechaun Origins and Leprechaun Returns. Maybe we should just do that in March. Um, and then also Child's Play. There's a new Child's Play out. Oh, man. These these are never going to end. All these new Halloween films. and Yep. We should just do the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise pretty soon because we know there's never another one of those coming out. So 
Actually, the rights just reverted back to Craven's estate, so there might be some movement on that. What? It, but what? What? Like honestly, what does that really mean, though? It means they have the rights to Freddy oh, now. Oh no, I I know. <laughs> <laughs> what <is this> actually <laughs> meant but i mean what does that act like what do you think his estate's really going to do with it? are they going to shop it around and be like hey yeah guys. i think they're probably going to be like hey like all like make another movie and just pay us um yeah. i truly thought that new line was hinting at another uh fucking elm street movie because in it chapter two they fucking pan to the sign of elm street five like so indiscreetly it was like weird so i thought they were hinting at another elm street yeah i, I think maybe they were just trying to remind you it was taking place in the in the 80s i know but it was just weird <laughs> how long it stayed on this the, assuming the people know when nightmare 5 the dream master actually came out <laughs> i think the that, dream I child or the right dream now, child yeah yeah with the dream child i think that honestly like right now would be like the perfect time to do an elm street I, I ever when I was watching it chapter two, I was like, dude, if this isn't fucking Freddy esque, I don't know what is. Like this would succeed so hard right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If it wasn't shitty like the fucking other remake. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. If they made uh, it like it, if they made it with the, the care that they made it with. Well, do you have that confidence See, I, I, that that would happen? I though? think the bar has I mean, been it's the set. Same with... studio, so why can't it happen? I think the bar has been set with with it. I think if you're going to get involved with the project now and do something with one of these major franchises, I think you got to really focus on putting out a really high quality product right now. I mean, you can't put out another Elm Street remake like the way you did or anything related to Elm Street. I think right? what you do is you do Dream Warriors. Um, you don't have to have it a sequel to the uh, original remake, the fucking original remake, the fucking Jackie Earl Haley shit. Just have it about fucking uh, six kids in a mental hospital who are all having fucking nightmares this dude named Freddy Krueger who was murdered by their parents why do you have to do the fucking Nancy story again you know what I mean just do just set it in a mental it don't got how to be like a remake of Dream Warriors I'm just saying it's a great setting like you don't have to do a origin story again we know fucking but Freddy's I, origin but I think I think the way filmmakers are today and they, they they see how these films are doing I mean you look at the new Joker film straight origin film you know it's pretty much character study Fuck. right so these things are doing well and I think whoa wow we can tell this whole Freddy story from and maybe change up a, you know a few things and stuff like that but actually have Freddy like as a real person and then by the end of the film, he's fucking thrown in a furnace. <clears throat> I wouldn't thing. mind that. Yeah, I so wouldn't mind that idea if you go through his an origin story, yeah, prequel. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. during real life. I mean, yeah, you I could do that. you could link it to the original franchise, or you could start a whole different franchise by doing an origin story and then just continuing along <clears> and doing your own thing after that. Like you don't have to do the whole dream master, dream, dream warriors master child. Yeah, I, I just think people are gonna be pissed the fuck off if Freddy's not in the movie, like as we know him. Well, if it's like a two-hour movie, you could do an origin story. But that's then... what I feel like people are going to get a little bit pissy with the Joker film too. But I mean, you they're, think they they're... should come out and say this is uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Chapter One? <laughs> <laughs> why? Well, uh, well, I assume once the trailer came out and people are watching the trailer, they're gonna. I'm assuming the character of Fred Krueger pre Freddy would be featured in it. I mean, I, you would assume they would. Yeah, advertise but you know it how enough. they do that sometimes. There will be. F- four minutes of freddy burnt up in the movie and they'll put fucking two of them in the trailer <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean they'll make it look like it's freddy the whole time yeah exactly no. yeah i mean i guess i mean he, but that's yeah. a marketing problem but fucking uh, modern day marketing is fucking garbage bro they would have to have like oh. taglines on it or something like before he was a dream demon or something he was like a child murderer he was a regular guy <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> before he was, he was a, a dream guy, demon except before he was a dream team, he was you mowing your lawn. Fred, they should, do you think they should make <laughs> keep Freddy as a child molester? No. <laughs> Fuck no. I only brought that up because I know how bad it annoys you. Dude, I... Uh, yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but no, uh, so... Uh, after that, we have... Um, Speaking of Freddy, we have uh, Jason Goes to Hell. 
Hearts of Darkness, the making of the Final Friday, is now funding on Indiegogo. Wow. The making it's of... a documentary on Jason Goes to Hell. It's already made five thousand out of its fifty thousand dollar goal. <clears throat> yeah, I yeah. actually just watched the Kane Hodder documentary I think about a week ago, and he was talking about how he did that scene. So for like a brief moment, you know, Kane Hodder got to play Jason and Freddy. It's kind of cool. Holy fuck. Hold why on. Don't they, why don't they just do a, how it was made for every single franchise horror movie? Why, that... why Jason 9, man? Jason Goes to Hell is Jason just Jason such... 9 is, needs it. It needs the love, man. It's such a great Friday, and nobody <laughs> fucking a, likes it. It's such a wretched piece of shit, dude. No, 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 no. but I, I think it would. I think it would make it interesting. Like, how was it made, though? Because of how much of a departure it was from the rest of the it franchise, is, it would kind of be interesting story to be like, well, how did we get from there to here? Yeah, but I mean, if you watch the, yeah. the Chris Lake memories, man, the director talks about his vision. He wanted to do something completely different after. You know, Jason takes Manhattan, which is pretty damn standard fucking slasher shit. Half on a boat and the other half shot in Vancouver, <laughs> not New York. Uh, Here's my thing, dude. So, listen. I mean, I don't know if I did. Jason goes to hell sucks, dude. Come on. No, listen. Here's, Do you really here's think it sucks, though, or it just sucks as a Friday the 13th It movie? sucks as a Friday the 13th. It, well, right. that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's Yes, you're right. If it was a standalone film, you know, and the whole hopping listen, thing and, and brutal kills and stuff. It yeah, it's now. okay. But as a Friday film, it fucking feels... It doesn't feel like a Jason. It either. does not because there is no Jason in it, really. You get five minutes in the beginning and that's it. We get soul hopping. And five Listen. minutes at the end. There are some cool kills in it in the uncut version. That's for sure. Yeah, the uncut version is definitely the way to go. I I, I watched the 35 millimeter non-uncut version at the drive-in and oh. there's so much taken out of it. It's like, wow, this feels really fucking light on what, the Yeah. On the- what is the deal with that movie and it's you know theatrical and the uncut or the uncut version like even when the box it came out the blu-ray box it came out a couple years ago they only had the theatrical in there yeah that's because paramount's fucking lazy as dicks dude but like come on dude like even fucking all these there's a new media book set out in germany and it's got like all these awesome individual you know releases and shit like that and that release is like the same disc as the american one it, it doesn't have the uncut version on it i'm like dude that's what? so there's nothing worse than when they release friday nine not uncut it's like fucking pointless because the only thing that's different is the gore it's better gore yeah. than the uncut. tell me about it you're fucking marathoning friday the 13th and you're in your semi cool uh friday tin that doesn't have friday the 13th written on the spine for god knows reason why they didn't fucking put that on there but anyways you're like part one two six seven eight oh wait a minute i gotta go grab my fucking why are you DVD. watching one two six seven eight what i was jumping ahead because i didn't want to count one two three four five Three, six four. seven eight it was oh. yeah i was yeah. so you get to fucking part eight and you're like ah hold on a minute i gotta go grab my dvd version <laughs> yeah it's like, true like what is this but i listen, gotta run upstairs to grab like come on it's ridiculous listen let me set the scene right picture a world okay where jason goes to hell is not called jason goes to hell it's like called like worm demon goes to hell or something and <laughs> you and it's this it's this 1989 or 1990 horror film that uh was a cult title in the video store and hasn't been released. And then all of a sudden, this company, Vinegar Syndrome, comes along and was like, dude, we found this fucking crazy movie, all right? It's about a dude, a serial killer, who gets blown the fuck up in the first five minutes of the movie. Yeah, fucking dies in the first five minutes. Then he comes back as a fucking black dude after he eats his heart and he's soul hopping around into people and it's fucking crazy. And there's this demon vagina fucking monster that goes up in a dead body and it creates the killer all over again. And it's coming to HD baby. And you'd be like, Holy fuck. This sounds crazy. I got to see it. And then you would watch it and you'd be like, Holy fuck. Vinegar syndrome released the craziest fucking movie. This movie is so weird, man. And people would love it. I mean, I will say Friday nine gave us Creighton Duke. So, yeah, but it like when you actually think about the premise, if it wasn't attached to Jason, everybody would be like, wow, this is such a bizarre, weird fucking movie, dude. It's awesome. Hey, man, I'm not disputing that fact, but it's hard to disconnect yourself with that when there is a Jason at the beginning of the fucking movie, you know, and then, yeah, <laughs> and it's linked to the franchise. It just, 
it's just hard to do it, man. You just can't. At least yeah. I can't. Maybe I don't I want remember, to. I, don't I remember seeing it in a theater and, you know, at this time, it was before you knew a ton about movies going into it. And as soon as the fucking doctor starts eating the heart i was like what the f-? i was like what the fuck is going on like, <laughs> yeah dude that's my same reaction i like i remember seeing that shit as a kid and i was like just so confused and honestly whenever jason gets blown up i think that was one of the fucking most epic things ever i was like holy shit they killed him what the fuck yeah. are they gonna do it's 10 minutes into the movie seven mm-hmm. minutes actually um and then I do agree that the body hopping is a little bit much. Like I wish they would have brought Jason back a little bit earlier, but at the same time when he fucking does come back and they're like, Oh shit, what's in the basement? And they're like, Oh my God, Diana's mother's body's in the basement. And then bust through the fucking floor and lands badass motherfucking Jason Voorhees, dude. It's so epic. It's fucking epic. You know what? It depends on how you look at that whole thing. You know, that epic scene with Jason exploding and shit. Man, when I was watching that shit, I fucking turned it off and turned on fucking the latest episode of Blossom. I was so pissed off. Really? Yeah. Why would you be pissed? <laughs> fucking Blossom. Hey, whoa, whoa, because Joey was my favorite, man. I had to they watch just the latest never episode did. of Blossom. They I was like, never did these it. motherfuckers just killed Jason. I'm like, fucking Blossom's calling Yeah, me. that's hey, fucking Blossom. crazy. They killed Jason Nobody's done that ever in the history of like slasher villains oh, to kill the villain right at the beginning. Jesus, you're so, fucking nuts. Yeah, you, I can get you going more than Jeremy. You know I didn't turn that shit off. You know I'm incapable of turning off a movie, <laughs> no matter how fucking bad it is. Because is true. there's something weird inside my brain that says, hey, it might get better. I don't know where this positivity and this, you know, I don't know this optimism comes from because generally I'm a pretty negative fucking person, let's face it. But I can do it. Look at my look look at my letterbox. I trust you. Trust me, I've watched all those minutes of those movies. Yeah. And I've watched I a lot of bad I've watched a lot of bad movies recently. I went on this Halloween spree recently watching all these like Halloween related type movies. Don't do that ever. <laughs> and all these clown movies, just please do not do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really you gotta fucking watch bad. You got to watch Drive Through. It's a clown movie. Oh, Drive Yeah, Drive Through is awesome, man. I love that movie. Or Killjoy 3 or 4. Yeah, Killjoy 3 is really good. I think there's like... Didn't they just put no, out Kill a Killjoy 4 is better than 3, though. Killjoy Goes to Hell. Yeah, kill, but I think there's like 5, and I think there's a 6 one now. There's too. like 6, I think. Yeah. No, I, I've, I stopped at 4. I keep losing track of these because they're not coming out physically. I think there's like another um, Evil Bong movie. I think there's like an 8th one now, or, or 7 and 8 or something. I don't know. Yeah, there's seven Evil Bong seven seven seven. It's set in like Vegas or something. That's kind of cool. You gotta take some shit to Vegas, right? Like like Leprechaun three. Yeah. Yep. That's another film that didn't make the ninety three or. It's whatever, the best one in the whole list. franchise. Prob- you, yeah, the ninety five list. I think it was. Did you like the the new Leprechaun movie? I did. I loved it. Actually, I fucking loved it too, man. I was yeah, a little was, bit weird. Remember, going we into were it, saying was, that it, we liked it more in Halloween. 18. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I thought it was actually yeah. pretty entertaining. I'm it's a better s- sequel than Halloween 18. I, w- I was surprised by how much I liked it. Yeah, I liked it too. I liked the little after, after that debacle of that WWE one. You remember that one from like a few years ago on yeah. Sci Fi? Yeah. Want to hear something funny? I still haven't seen it. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, dude. It's so basic and average. It's just yeah. so pointless. Yeah, anyway. it's, it's it was disappointing. I like the nods that they had in the new Leprechaun to the original film. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, like, yeah, it was like awesome. There was, they, they had continuity. There was relatable characters. I was like, that's pretty fucking mm-hmm. crazy for a Leprechaun. Film. I want them to make another one. I want them to make ten more. I mean, really, I was scared shitless going into this, thinking, no Warwick Davis. This is crazy. I want Ewok in my motherfucking you know Leprechaun films, and yeah. Uh, yeah. As soon as I heard the guy talk, I burst out laughing. I was like, I love this guy, man. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. I was fucking howling. It's awesome. Fuck the howling franchise, by the way. All right. Yeah. Fuck the howling. <laughs> All right. Final piece up here for news. Um, apparently, Eli Roth is producing a new Halloween horror film for Orion called 1031. Is it an anthology or is it? What is it? Or is there not even news on that? Um, the script is about a young woman who takes her niece and nephew trick-or-treating and discovers a note inside a candy wrapper that says there's a killer on the loose on her block. Sounds fun enough. Is yeah. his name Michael Myers? 1031. There was <clears throat> there was a film that was released by Scream Team Releasing that came out, I think, last year called 1031. 
Yeah, I, I felt like yeah. there, there, somebody had to have made a film called that. Maybe, right maybe it's a working title. I've reviewed it before. It's actually good. Ten Thirty One's a good film. Crazy. Yeah. So, so, <clears throat> um, speaking of Eli Roth, I was in. Where the hell was it? It wasn't. It was Cut to the Chase. The group page Cut to the Chase. And there's this fucking guy in there. Uh, Dan Chase posted this um, news about <laughs> Eli Roth. And uh oh, I think I know what you're talking about. This guy, of course, you know, anytime Eli Roth news is posted, like the first comment's going to be something negative. Um, th- this dude, Mike Sanders, oh, nice. he said, for a mediocre director, this guy has the ego the size of a Grand Canyon. And then Dan Chase was like, nah, he's amazing. And he's like, aside from Hostel 1 and 2, his movies are all ripped off something better and forgettable. So I commented in and I was like, in what way is his ego huge or the size of the Grand Canyon? And he said, well, for one thing, he constantly he can constantly considers himself a master of horror when his movies have yet to stand the test of time. And I said, show me one example of himself, of him calling himself a master. If he constantly does it, then this shouldn't be an, this should be an easy task. And he said, dude, I've said my piece. You don't agree with my opinion on this talented hack, talentless hack. Well, tough shit. Google is your friend. Have at it. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, dude. I was oh, like, there, you there's say a great internet fight. And bullshit, then someone calls you out on it and you run away. Weak shit. Like he said, there's, he's like, he constantly refers to himself as a master of horror. And then I'm like, okay, give me one, literal one example. He's like, dude, <laughs> fuck you. You, you know what? Google, Google that yourself. You know what the irony is about that? Is that. This guy is claiming that Eli Roth is, you know, he's got this huge head and always talking up his shit that he's master of horror. In fact, when you when you see Eli Roth in interviews and stuff, he's always giving props to his to the people that have influenced him. He's constantly talking about other yeah, people. He I never know. talks about himself. He talks about all these Italian directors and all the influences and shit. He's he's pretty fucking modest, man, about like his own career. Like he's he yeah, understands that he once took- heard him talk about himself in a egotistical fucking way where he's saying he's the shit. Never. I've never heard that. Again, people and hate his haircut. Has people fucking hate his haircut, so they just hate on him. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm yeah, telling dude, you, man. It's, so, it's yeah. super annoying because I'm like, okay, if you don't like his movies, that's one thing. But don't literally make up stuff about him that he's this egotistical maniac because he's really not. Like he's de- he, de- he doesn't do any of that shit you say that he does and then i tell no. you that and you fucking run away and i've seen lots like i mean there's a reason why you know if he, that eli roth is always talking about films on special features on releases and shit because he knows what the fuck he's talking about and he it, yeah it's, he's it's, a horror fan he's a horror fan he's not an ego he's not a horror egotistical fucking maniac like this crazy <laughs> shit crazy shit that even i don't know fucking people are fucked in the head <laughs> that that's just crazy that is crazy shit yeah, and, so you know, and, that, when I, and when I see an Eli Roth feature on on a release I buy, I always check it out because he's always got something interesting to say, and usually comes up with some shit I didn't know. So I'm like, "Fuck yeah, man, that's good, that's good." Yep. So that's the news. Cool, man. That's awesome, man. Todd Sheets commented on my fucking review of Bone Hill Road. He didn't comment on mine. He, oh. for the people that don't know, he's the director of the movie. <laughs> Yeah, that we actually we uh, one of our guests on here worked on that movie. Yeah, Steve did. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I found that out in the comments. Steve commented on my review, and he's like, "Dude, did you not know when you were reviewing it?" No, I didn't, man. It was after. Dude, I that's hadn't... so funny because he talked about it so much when he was on set, dude. And I completely... like working on it. <laughs> I fucking forgot. He's like, "Dude, if you watch the special features, I'm actually in one of them." I'm like, "Fuck." <laughs> Such a bad friend. Terrible. Yeah. So that's the news? Cool. And that is the news. Fucking thing sucks! I am the devil. And I am here to do the devil's work. They will say that I have shed innocent blood. What's blood for, if not for shedding? I like to dissect girls. Did you know I'm utterly insane? Have you checked the children? Children. children? What do we do? Why don't we just wait here for a little while? See what happens. 
doomed. You're all doomed. Alrighty, so getting into the dub 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 portion of the show. If it is your first time tuning in, that's where we go round tree, review a bunch of films, give some ridiculous ratings, and then pass the torch. Um, so yeah, this week we got no box office brawl, uh, because there's no movies coming out and, uh, there's no dead mail because the Jew is not here. (laughs) And I guess me and JP were too lazy to come up with some new segments considering, well, we didn't really have that long of a break. It was only four or five months. So who wants to start us off this week? Um, I will. Wow. Look at this guy Mm -hmm. stepping up his game. Okay. Well, we couldn't just put it on Jeremy in here. Well, fuck you. Fine, I'll go first. Fuck. Every fucking time. (laughs) So, um, this movie here is a movie that I saw in the theater, actually. And I watched it about a month ago and some change. (sighs) This review's going to be awesome. And it is called... (laughs) It is called... I I actually... Like, Carly saw it with me, so she can attest to it. So she can fill you in on some details? (laughs) <laughs> it is called it's a sequel i've never seen the original that's weird. um and it is called return of the slasher nurse oh my god <laughs> Re- okay really the return of I the slasher nurse i haven't even heard of this before uh, have you heard of, of the sense. slasher nurse no no oh well that's the original <laughs> what the fuck no I mean, it's yeah. a classic yeah wow so um apparently it takes place Six years after a group of friends went missing on a trip to a cabin in the woods, Kara, the younger sister of Aaron, is still determined to find out what happened to her older sister. Um, so basically, it follows this girl who is uh, going to investigate what happened to her sister. Um, she basically gets some information. She meets this other dude. They go and uh, I guess sort of interrogate this older dude and they end up killing him. So they're kind of on the run from that. Meanwhile, there's a slasher nurse who is like dressed up in a nurse's costume and her sister who is uh, a killer as well. And they're trying to find the girl and kill her because she is trying to stop them and they kill she killed her dad their dad i believe that was who they interrogated um so this is a super shoestring budget um independent film um we saw it at this convention that we went to with uh i i guess the actors that were there was that who that was the actors yeah they weren't there yeah um it's funny because every single person in this movie has like tattoos or like piercings and looks like a horror fan (laughs) (laughs) and um every single female in this movie minus like two get nude no matter if they're old or young or ugly or fat (laughs) like like every chick is titties out in this movie sometimes vagina out too Mm -hmm. um so they sent out one contract to everybody (laughs) <laughs> <Pretty much>. yeah <laughs> and uh it's uh okay so the biggest problem with this movie is it it runs too long and there are wasted scenes like just scenes of long dialogue that is just unneeded if you would have trimmed some of that out this would honestly be like a really fun shoestring budget movie um i still had fun with it and there was actually genuinely good moments in the movie um such as the uh when, all the titties when this, yeah that um and then there was uh there was a scene where this dude is with this chick upstairs and he's like basically wants to get fucked in the butt mm. and it's really funny and That's then the, the slasher nurse comes in <laughs> and she like sticks a machete up his ass and it is very fucking funny <laughs> Uh, and I, I, I know shit on my like dick that. or blood on my knife. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was really funny. Um, there's some, there's some questionable, you know, cinematography and um, lighting in certain scenes where it looks like maybe it was they were trying to pass it off as nighttime, but it was kind of daytime and stuff like that. Very, you know, uh, you see, there's oh, there's one character that's really annoying. 
he's like walking around with his like a WWE like wrestling belt and he's just obnoxious and fucking super lame. Um and he's like trying to hit on these chicks and shit. Uh he sucks, but I mean everybody else is kind of fun and funny and the chick the lead chick's pretty hot. Um it was what did you think of it, Carly? I thought this was horrible. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I just can't handle these low. I'm sorry. Like, I appreciate the efforts. Like, you made a movie. Good for you. But I just can't take these low. But it was also like midnight. Movie, but they made a sequel to a movie. Yeah. <laughs> but like, it was like midnight and we're watching this. And at first I was like, okay with it. But then it over. Like, the biggest problem, like you said, is those scenes where there's just dialogue. And they're just sitting around like in their living room. And nothing is happening. And I, I was just getting really tired and annoyed. But, um, you know, props to them to them for making a movie. Um, and Dude. good on you for reviewing this and giving it a somewhat positive review. But I, I, I actually know. liked it. Like, while yeah, I was watching yeah. it, I was into it. I was like, <laughs> this is just, I was like the only person in the theater fucking busting out laughing and shit. Because everyone else <laughs> in the theater was probably just the actors. Wow, and you <laughs> never laugh out loud. So that shit must have been fucking funny. <laughs> or they all just left. <laughs> no, the, uh, it was just it was just cool because like it, this is a fucking nice theater that we were in. It is very nice. We also mm-hmm. got to see Frankenhooker in there before this with Hen and Lauder doing a live commentary, um, and that was fucking a blast. Yeah. And then before that, there was a live podcast of some podcasters. What was the what was the podcast called? I think it was ho- just Horror Movie Night podcast. Yeah, Horror Movie Night. So shout out to them. They were pretty nice, but they were kind of like the, more of a like mainstream podcast, but they were cool. Um, and the, like, so by the time we watched that podcast, then we watched Fr- Frankenhooker and it was like midnight. And we, <laughs> and I'm like, let's stay for this slasher nurse movie. And then um, I'm watching it and like, I don't know, she's like having fun at first and then like an hour into it, she just likes, pu- she just looks like pure misery. <laughs> and I'm over there laughing and having fun. <laughs> There's no runtime online for this movie either because I was trying to see if it was actually as long as I felt like it was or if I was just done with it and it felt really long. Yeah, but when you Googled just- it, it wasn't on there. It wasn't on Letterboxd either. I had to put it on. <laughs> um, yeah, so apparently it did an Indiegogo. And I, apparently you can watch the first... It made $272 out of its $1,000 goal. Huh. 270 72 <laughs> Wow. Oh. Might be the worst Indiegogo campaign I've ever seen. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, they made the fucking movie, man. And it played in a theater. Yeah, it sounds like they made it for 50 bucks and took the whole cast out for fucking Red Lobster. After. Apparently, it was a $10,000 budget. Apparently. Huh. Crazy. Uh, but yeah, I actually had fun with it. And um, I I thought I recorded a review for it, but I did. Did I ever upload that? Uh, I, don't I don't think know. so. Huh. I recorded a review for it. I don't think I ever uploaded it, though. Um, it was, it was, a I, dude, I had fun with it. It's a bad movie. What do you do? Course, just record but... reviews like that and go, I'm going to, I'm going to upload that one on a, you know, rainy day. <laughs> uh, honestly, <laughs> I up. record a lot of stuff that I never upload. I just forget to, or I get lazy and then I end up deleting it or I can't remember which file it was. I don't feel like going through them all. <laughs> so yeah. Wow. Um, but anyway, yeah, it was, uh. Not not a good movie, but in the theater, it, like I think Moods would appreciate this. He likes the no budget stuff sometimes. Yeah. Um, I do, like I, do. I would say it had like if you look at Bone Hill Road, it had like quarter of that's budget. Yeah, <laughs> Bone Hill Road. I mean, it's definitely low budget, but man, it's got it's got decent effects and stuff, man. It yeah, no, I to... I liked it. I picked that up at Walmart last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched. I did a review on it. Yeah, it's one of the better Wild Eyes that I've seen in a while. Yeah, they've been hit and miss as like as usual, but yeah. Yeah, but those two new Amityville films are coming to Wild Eye. Are they really? Man, they're just yeah. picking up everything, man. It's crazy. I mean, yep. that's the thing with Wild Eye, man. Sometimes they they release some just gutter gutter shit, and other times like did pretty you, good. Did you pre order the Vinegar Syndrome Amityville box set? I, uh, you know what? I meant to do it on that Flash Black Friday sale, and I fucking forgot. I like woke up the next day and I was like, shit, man. 
<laughs> ate my cereal while I was crying into it and shit. I was like, fuck. <laughs> no, I'm way behind. I'm, I'm actually just going to wait for the Black Friday, Friday sale and then catch up in the last like four months worth of shit. Mm. So maybe, okay. I'll, maybe I'll just spend all the Patreon money on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. All right. all right. What was your rating on that? Three. <laughs> two. Two. And you enjoyed this. And you enjoyed this two out of ten. Uh-huh. Wow. That's very honest. That's very honest. With the three, man. That's very honest. Oh, no, no. I actually have it rated as a five on Letterboxd. So. Wow, you are such a liar. Five, well, a three, two and a half, which equals a yeah. five. Um, I'd say four. Usually Between people... a two and a four. Well, dude, the pr- doing the ra- what the fuck is it's it? A three. So a three. Um, Mike's all worried now. He's no, like, I'm going like, to go through this shit with my not. ratings too. No, I'm, I'm saying like between a two out of ten and a four out of ten. So a three out of ten. That would say no, the only like just place somewhere in, in that range. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll mark you down as a three out of ten, there, Broski. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be on the website is like two to four yeah out of two out of four <laughs> or two to four range oh that's great can't quite decide but all right well i guess i'll go next because i don't know why i'll just go next uh new film that just came out a couple days ago actually um october 1st of 2019 and it's a film called the young cannibals uh this is a film from the uk i believe no it was it was actually from the u.s it's u.s production I don't know why I was thinking UK. I'm thinking of something else. Uh, but yeah, it's called The Young Cannibals. Uh, basically, what this one is about is about a group of like seven friends that head up to the mountains for some R&R. You know what people do when they go out into the woods. Do some drinking, have some butt sex and whatnot. Anyways, they get up there and they're kind of doing their thing and stuff. And this dude kind of approaches them and, you know, he's got some burgers. And they're like, well, what kind of young people are going to turn down free fucking burgers, right? So he gives them this raw meat and shit, and and uh, he's like, go ahead, eat these burgers. So, of course, they cook them up, and they eat all these burgers, except for one dude, because he's a fucking vegan. That's how horror movies are nowadays. They have the one character that's a vegan. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So now they got the token vegan guy in the film. And what these people do not know is that these burgers are actually made out of humans. And the purpose behind this dude feeding all these people these human burgers is to actually set them up because this monster that is out in the woods eats cannibals. So his idea to deflect, you know, the danger off himself is to feed these innocent kids, these cannibal or these human burgers and then drive them out into the woods and strand them and go back to his house. And that's exactly what he does. It's kind of original. I've never even actually heard of that before. A monster that attacks cannibals. So my thoughts on the film, um, it's actually pretty good. The the acting is decent in this movie. I was quite surprised, but uh, the cinematography and the atmosphere set up in this is actually pretty damn well done at first i wasn't really too sure the dialogue was pretty shitty in the beginning and i was like oh my god this is gonna be another one of those real shit movies but it gets into it quite fast you know they eat these burgers these human burgers quite fast they get dropped off in the in the forest and shit kind of goes crazy man i like the idea of this monster and the monster actually looked pretty damn cool i will say but the monster is interesting because he can kind of go invisible so you can't really see him uh, unfortunately, there is no explanation to why this monster, you know, attacks cannibals and things like that or and can turn it, you know, invisible and stuff like that. But uh, really, I mean, do you actually need that? I mean, there is a prologue in the beginning of the film having to do with this guy. So what had happened in the prologue is this guy actually, you know, he was in a plane crash and a bunch of people. It basically, it's like Alive. If you guys ever seen the movie Alive before, there's a plane crash and they were forced yeah, to eat some humans. They were forced to eat some humans. And, of course, there's a couple survivors. And then out of the fucking blue, this monster just attacks this one dude. Anyways, somehow this guy gets away and that's why he does what he does to these people. Um, but it's pretty cool, man. It's basically a slasher film with monsters. These people are out in the woods trying to survive and they're getting attacked by this crazy looking monster. Um, like I said, pretty good, uh, atmosphere and stuff. But the, the main thing for me in this film was the awesome music. It has this great synth soundtrack that really kept it going. Awesome. Like it's amazing how music can make or break a film for me in this type of, 
in these type of films, I mean, the storyline is something you've kind of seen before. I mean, with a little different setup here, but uh, but the music really kind of drive is the main driving force here. Um, some of the characters make some pretty stupid ass decisions, but that's like any type of slasher film, really. Uh, I guess in this case, monster slasher film type deal. Uh, but overall, I actually thought it was definitely worth the watch. It was way better than I was anticipating it to be. I do say check it out. I'm going to give it about a six and a half out of ten. Um, check it out, Young Cannibals. Not bad. All right, I guess I'll go. Um, so, <laughs> late night on cable, there was a movie that showed up in the program guide called Dead Ant, and I, I, I hit up the Fresh Cuts thread and was like, "Anyone seen this?" And my first red flag should have been Don and Ellie saying, "Yeah, I saw it, and I thought it was pretty good." <laughs> so you, you moron! <laughs> against my better, so I, what happened is I ended up DVRing. I didn't watch it that night because I think it was like a work night, and I was pretty tired. So a few days ago, um, I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna throw it on because you know I need to see if it's worth even watching, or if I'm just gonna delete it." So I ended up watching it. Basically, the premise is uh, there's this there, – it, it labels them a metal band, but it's more just like you know standard hard rock band. And they're on their way to a gig, kind, kind of driving through the desert. Nickelback. Um, <laughs> yeah, fucking – pretty much. But uh, <laughs> so it's kind of just following them on their journey to get to like their next gig or whatever. And um, – they make a couple stops and they end up out in the desert, kind of in the middle of nowhere. They go on like a, a drugs and drinking uh, binge. And when they're getting ready to like pack up and continue their journey, they end up coming across this fucking ant hole where they're just like these. At first, they're just like kind of big ants, like maybe you know, the size of like small little animals, but then there's certain things that make them turn like gigantic. And, uh, the, the cast, I mean, everyone's going to recognize, uh, Sean Astin is in this Jake Busey. The real saving grace of this is Tom Arnold. Cause he's just a funny guy. And he, you, you could tell like he knows he's starring in a real piece of shit here. So he, so he's just delivering his lines kind of over the top. Oh, he's just know. straight hamming it up. Nice. He's hamming it up, like making it, a joke out of every piece of dialogue he can he can get with chewing the scenery doing all that kind of stuff so i mean i did kind of get a kick out of his character uh it's always kind of weird um when these random like movies you've never heard of that there's actually a cast of like recognizable people in it and you know so that kind of piqued my interest besides just don and ellie saying he liked it but uh um it's it's really not that good of a movie. It's a little better than I thought it was going to be just because it got some laughs out of me. Um, the CGI is fucking atrocious. Like if, if you – I'm sure everyone's familiar with sci-fi asylum movies. Like think of how bad most of like the monsters and creatures in that movie are those kind of movies look. And that's pretty much what we're dealing with here. I mean, I, this movie would have almost been better if there were no killer ants and it was just these guys kind of partying on the road. Um, so, yeah, the finales. So then it just the turns movie. into road trip? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> road trip, but like over the hill guys on a road trip. <laughs> yeah. Um, the finale was decent. Uh, I mean, they, it's so dumb. It's like the way to kill the ants is with rock and roll, basically. <laughs> Fucking playing our... Oh guitars at, at high level makes them explode their heads explode um <laughs> don't get mad at me spoiling it it just means you never have to watch it so um <laughs> yeah like i said i got a few laughs out of it which is more than i expected a couple scenes into it so it's still getting a very low rating i would say maybe like a three out of ten um unless you really have a morbid curiosity for these kind of things just avoid the shit out of it all right, so we have a rating uh, two between a two and a four. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fuck, it's awesome. Would you give that three? Yeah, yeah. I actually heard some people say they like that movie. It's interesting. I mean, besides it's... Dawn, what a Schreier. <laughs> yeah, really, probably. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's like I don't want to say there's nothing redeeming about it, but it's it's like it's not enough to like a full length movie to make you really invested and interested in my opinion. Yeah. For show, Carly. 
All right. Well, going to be talking about one that um, I actually picked up on one of Vinegar Syndrome's sales a while back. I've been trying to collect those whenever they have the sales now because I think they do have some cool movies. And um, it's a movie I've never seen before, and it is Uninvited from... I believe 1988. It says 87 on the back, but on IMDb it says 88. I don't know. But, um, yeah, it's 88. Yeah. So, yeah, this movie basically it starts out with, um, this sort of biochemical lab and they are doing, uh, testings on animals and specifically they have this cat and they inject something into the cat. And of course, the cat escapes the lab and they're trying to track it down but it gets away and it kind of goes on this little killing spree and then it um happens upon this group of i guess spring breakers who are going on this cruise along with um some people who are up to no good they're kind of on the run to the cayman islands so um you know they they pick up this cat and take it on the boat with them and it's basically the you know, people who are going to the Cayman Islands are the this multimillionaire and um, these two girls and these three dudes they pick up, as well as like some other people who are, uh, you know, along with the crew. And um, things kind of escalate from there, and the cat starts um, attacking the people on the boat. So, yeah, this one I thought was a lot of fun. Um, it's definitely uh, everything you would want in a so bad it's good type of movie. Um, I think my favorite part about it is how serious the music is throughout it. Um, it just makes it completely comedic, and anytime something bad happens, it's taken completely seriously. And I think that's really key in these movies is when it takes itself completely serious, um, just comes off as hilarious. The acting's not as bad as I was expecting going into this. Um, it's your typical, you know, cheesy 80s acting. Um, but like I said, whenever things get things kind of go down, um, it's just very over dramatic and uh, comes off as really funny to me. Um, there, the scenes where this cat, uh, don't think I really mentioned, but the cat pretty much has this tiny mutant monster that comes out of its mouth and. Um, the effect uh, looks, um, you know, pretty bad, but once again, that adds to the humor to it, and uh, you kind of just look forward to those scenes. Uh, there's specifically a scene where it's in a truck, and it kills this guy, and um, I just thought it was fantastic. Um, but yeah, overall, um, the movie, I, I thought it was a lot of fun. Probably the most fun I've honestly had with a movie in recent time. And um, it's one that I would definitely uh, check out again. It, it kind of plays out like a slasher, honestly, but with a cat. And going into it, I didn't really know what it was about. I kind of, I knew it was about killer cats. And I was expecting it to be just a bunch of, you know, cats that get on this boat and start killing people. But it's not like that at all. And I was happy with what I got. Um like I said, it's a B movie. It's not a great movie, but for the entertainment value you get out of it, um, I think it's worth checking out and definitely has rewatchability. So I give it a six out of 10. Yeah. Yeah, man. That, I love that movie's fun. Yeah. Did you, did you watch the alternate ending for it too? No, I did not. I just watched this one last night actually, but no, I did. I didn't watch. Yeah. That. There's, there's a little bit of a different ending to it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's. I think I'd probably just stick with the uh, the one that they used. But it's all, right. all right. Um, back to me. Uh, <clears throat> trying to do films that I ain't doing in my thirty one days. So yeah, that's my problem uh, too here. Going back a little bit, um, I saw Midsommar, the director's cut, and right. I haven't talked about this film yet. So what? How did you um, pronounce it? Midsommar. <laughs> Samar. Samara. How is it pronounced? Is it not Midsummer? I mean, it's fucking not spelled with a U. Midsummer? Wouldn't it be Midsummer? Yeah, it, it means mids midsummer, but it's like Swedish. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I, I swear to God, every person has called it Midsummer. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just. Two. I don't. I'm just not saying that. I'm saying Midsummer, no matter what. I, okay. I, I made up my mind on that one. Because it, it's M I D S O <laughs> mid so more. No, I know, I know how it's spelled, but it just, I don't um, know, it just sounds that sounds ridiculous. That sounds like some French shit right there, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, have you seen it? 
No, no I haven't yet because I haven't. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll yeah, I didn't want to get into these. Everybody knows why I've I haven't seen, seen the fucking movie. <clears throat> I've seen it twice now. Uh, oh, look at this guy rubbing it in my it. fucking face. I know. I'm about to go see it again just because Moods hasn't seen it. Well, I, I was gonna, <laughs> I was going to grab the Blu-ray, and I'm like, twenty seven dollars for a fucking studio. I'm like, fuck that shit. No way. Yeah. So Midsummer it is, or <laughs> Midsummer, <laughs> it is Ari Aster's next movie. Um, and it's another cult one. So uh, I'll, I'll try to be pretty spoiler free since you haven't seen it. Um, and I'll briefly talk about the director's cut differences. Um, so it basically follows a girl who had something very tragic happen in her life. And her boyfriend, who she's trying to be close with um, in her time of need, is planning on going to Sweden for the summer to uh, take part in this festival that a friend of his is from. It's like a commune, and he's from there, and he's going to bring a couple of Americans there. Uh, And he kind of like unwillingly invites her, um, and she decides to go with them. Uh, They go to Sweden, uh, hang out with this commune, take some mushrooms, uh, and then, like, weird stuff starts happening, cult-like stuff, stuff like that. So that that's kind of your setup there. Um, I think that this movie is fantastic. I think most people do who have seen it. Um, definitely heavily influenced from other cult films that we've seen in the past, most notably The Wicker Man. Um, but I think the acting is phenomenal. Um, the character development is really good in this one. It has a lot of power to it. Um, there is actually an amazing little nod to Texas Chainsaw, like in the middle of the film, which was pretty interesting. Uh, I think that the emotion in this film is what really sells it. It's, it's not as, it is about the cult, but it's also about relationships and loss and desperation in loss and, um, you know, sort of the griefing, grieving process and how that can really be. Um, detrimental to depending on how you do it um so i think that and it's about a relationship really i mean it is heavily about a relationship between a guy and a girl uh it's long (laughs) Uh, i think the original cut is like two and a half hours and then the the director's cut is like near three hours like two hours 50 minutes or something um and the only thing that is added into the um director's cut that i can tell is extra character development and maybe a scene or two that wasn't in the uh original cut um the character development definitely is better um it's more fleshed out and it it kind of clears up any little gray areas you were having about the relationship um i think that it's unnecessary though i think if you're gonna you don't need to see that cut i do think it's the better cut but it's not very it's not essential it's not essential it's not enough of a difference to make it necessary to see um if you don't if, unless you're just purely interested um it's not a must see uh but yeah it is it is a movie that is he- like very heavy like it it the emotion in it like what you're seeing it's you know very powerful um there is tons and tons of cool um things that you pick up on the second watch that you did in the first watch. Um, I think that I don't think it's as good as hereditary at all. Um, but it is, uh, a, still a very solid film. Uh, I gave it a 8.5 the first time and I gave it a nine the second time. Cool. Yeah. It's an incredible movie. I mean, I haven't seen the director's cut. I, I do want to. I just, I don't have a lot of time to get out to theaters for like repeat viewings. Even for a technically, three hour there's repeat more. viewing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if once it becomes available <clears throat> to see at home, you know, I'm definitely gonna watch it because I mean, it's it's probably top movie of the year so yeah, far. It comes for out me. in a couple weeks, doesn't it? Something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I. 
I love it. It's a great movie. Yeah, to get a Jordan Peele in an Ari Aster movie and a Robert Egger mo- Eggers movie in the same year is kind of crazy because right now I consider those three to be the best in the genre of you know horror and uh, in terms of like modern new filmmakers uh, and Le- Eggers The Lighthouse looks really freaking cool too. So looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does look cool, man. Probably won't get it, so. (laughs) I'll see you next year. (laughs) That's all right. I'll I'll watch it for you. Yeah, fuck. This this mid-sommer, whatever the fuck you're saying, sounds cool, though. Samar. Samar. Jesus. That just, that sounds really Um, foregay. Mid-sommar, the director's cut. Yeah. You know, okay, uh, next up here. Actually, the last f- film I did, it was a UK film, Young Cannibals. I'm just tripping balls here. Anyways, this one right here is from 2018. I believe this one came out last year. Uh, yeah, from 2018, another film from the UK, and it's called The Legend of Hallow- Halloween Jack. Hmm. Uh. <laughs> There's a sequel in Walmart right now. This, yeah, is, just- this, is, oh. why, this is why I watched this. <laughs> the other night because I was like I saw that the sequel came out and I missed it. I didn't watch this one last year because I was smart the cover is like neat looking right <laughs> yeah so I was like well I gotta fucking you know I gotta watch the first one before I see the sequel but and I was gonna do them back to back the other night and after watching this one I was like nah, I might just move on to something else <laughs> so yeah so this is last year's Legend of Halloween Jack and basically what the story is we've seen this a million times but uh, it's about a serial killer that is on trial for his crimes and you know the and it's like a small town right it's got the whole small town vibe thing and you know the whole police force and the whole town is there and everyone's just like kill him kill him and you know it's like one of those type of deals anyways um he ends up getting let off he goes free because of a technicality apparently one of the police officers when they arrested him uh did not read him his miranda rights yeah, right. He's a fucking serial killer. You don't read him his rights and he gets off? Okay, so anyways. So, yeah, he gets free. So he's back at his house and shit. So, of course, the sheriff calls up his um, his other redneck small town hillbilly friends and says, well, we got to do something about this. So a couple of the other deputies and shit, he gathers them up and they go out to the place to do some vigilante justice. They pull him out of the house. They take him out to uh, like a corn patch. They strap him up on a cross, dress him up like a scarecrow, and they fucking just shoot him. They just blast him up with fucking guns. It's that's, it's very American to do that, I think. Not in the UK. I was thinking, where the hell these guys even got Have you guns, ever seen but... Dark Knight of the Scarecrow? Yes, I have. Uh, <laughs> but uh, So anyways, they end up killing him, and of course they take an oath together saying, hey, no one say a word of this. Yeah, we've all seen this before. It's about a year later, and one of the people that was involved with the murder of the serial killer can't take it anymore. He decides, you know, of course, why would you ever decide to do this? He decides that he's going to go to the grave site, which is right near where they shot him, and off himself. This guy fucking shoots himself in the head and kills himself right on the grave site. Of course, his blood drains into the ground and reanimates the serial killer, a.k.a. Halloween Jack. And of course, what is Halloween Jack going to do? He rises up and goes after everybody that killed him. So my thoughts on the film, it's really, really shitty. <laughs> it's it's low it's it's not as low budget as I was expecting it to be. It's more about just the like the setup is fine. We've seen this a million times and shit like that, but it's it's just really lame. Like honestly, Halloween Jack's costume is it's all right and shit, but the kills just aren't there. When you're watching a film like this, you need the kills to be you know, to kind of stick out and shit like that. There's a little bit too much story going on in between and stuff too that really does take away from the core of, you know, this kind of revenge story um, from Halloween Jack. So you get into the third act and then, of course, there's like a major twist in the whole story and I'm like, oh, okay, well, that just brought it up half a point, you know, kind of thing. But really, there's no driving force here, man. It's it's really, it's dialogue heavy a lot of a lot of characters you really don't give a fuck about because I mean let's face it these vigilantes they're all pieces of shit anyways they're redneck killabillies no one gives a shit no one gives a shit about the serial killer and there's like no tits in this so I was really losing my interest um, <laughs> I don't know why I said that the music was pretty shitty in it too but uh, overall like 
you know, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen. I won't I won't be down like a two out of ten or anything with it, but it's a pretty standardized Halloween attempt that just really doesn't deliver. You know, it's worth a watch, I guess, if you're into this type of shit. But I'm going to come in about a four out of ten. There's really nothing to say about it. There's nothing new here. I wish I could report on some great kills and shit, but the body count's <laughs> really low because the vigilantes that killed Halloween Jack, there's only like four of them, and one of them fucking killed himself. <laughs> right? So right there, I'm like, who the, who's this guy going to kill? And actually, coming back to that, it actually doesn't really even make sense. He starts killing like other people that are associated. I'm like, okay, this is just ridiculous. It makes no sense, man. He's not going to do this, given what the twist is. Retarded. Legend of Halloween Jack, 4 out of 10. Maybe the sequel's better. I don't know. But I was really disappointed in this film because I remember people actually saying it was pretty decent. But then again, it was Matt. You and your horror movies. <laughs> so therefore, I should have learned my lesson. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm just joking. But yeah, 4 out of 10. Not really a great watch. Again, I've tortured myself this Halloween season with a lot of shitty clown and Halloween-based films. Mike. All right. So next up, I received a screener of this one. It's a very small-scale movie, very low budget. It is called Killer Sofa. Oh, dude, I watched it yesterday. (laughs) Oh, did you? Yeah, man, I did. (laughs) <laughs> you know why I watched it, man? At first, I was like, Killer Sofa, really? Like, fuck, I, I wasn't in the mood. Then I saw it was from New Zealand, and I was like, giddy up. I fucking love movies from New Zealand. It's like one of my favorite countries that puts out films, I swear to God. Yeah. When I was hearing that accent, I was like, is that Australian or New Zealand? When I was trying to place it. Um, this movie's pretty funny. I mean, it's it's very – it's one of those movies where they're – you know they're they're struggling to use what little budget they have to <laughs> to make this movie. I thought like the the sofa gags are pretty good. It t- it takes a little while to get going, but I mean the setup is basically you, you know we open up with what the killer doing some voodoo shit. Like you assume okay that's what's going on. He's his spirit's gonna get transferred into this sofa. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> but it's, it's just, I know you're thinking one thing and then the end of the movie comes. You're like what the fuck. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's like when so- like when the agent busts in and like shoots the sofa and then oh, oh my god, it's, so it's like what the fuck? <laughs> like yeah, yeah. This one, it's almost like it's good because of its absurdity. It's not. I mean, it's not a good movie, but I laughed a lot. I had a good time with it for what it was. Uh, it's not something like I would. Tell people they got to run out and see, or I guess sit down and see, because it's not going to be playing at any theater. But, I mean, if if you're in the mood for one of those kind of micro-budget movies where, you know, you kind of know what to expect going in, um, and you want to see it just for the absurdity of a movie called Killer Sofa, I'd say go ahead and check it out. You know, just temper your expectations of what you're going to get. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was all right. Uh, I guess for a rating, well, I... <laughs> I'm, I have to go above dead ants. So, um, I'll say fucking four and a half. Dude, I really enjoyed it, man. You know what was really surprising about Killer Sofa is how serious they were taking it. I mean, if you if you know anything about the films that come out of New Zealand, for the most part, they do horror comedies like straight up. And mm-hmm. a lot of them can be pretty silly and shit like that. But this one obviously was a horror comedy. I mean, given the premise of a killer sofa, you know, but they didn't go over the top of the comedy whatsoever in this there's actually parts where they're trying to be scary and serious. It was, it was really blowing my mind. It's played pretty straight. There's a fucking scene in here where the killer sofa is dumping a body over the, uh, the balcony. (laughs) Dude, I was howling watching that part. It just looks so ridiculous. He like kind of stands up and pushes this body over and I'm like, what the fuck? But surprisingly, the acting was really good in it too. All around. And I was looking at like acting credits and shit. And the, the main girl in the film, the one that everybody was obsessed with and shit, she had like I think it was her first movie. That's oh, crazy. Wow. She because she was actually really good in the movie, and I thought everyone was actually quite good. Um, it is a micro budget film, but it's not like shoestring. There's definitely a little bit of a budget. I mean, but at least they you know did practical. I mean, you got to admit though, looking at the sofa, it had that face on it was absolutely funny as hell, man. It's a great joke, but I thought it was great. I gave it like a six and a half. Wow, yeah, it was fun. All right. Well, my next one, I'm just going to get this one out of the way. Um, 
This is one that's been at uh, this DVD, used DVD store that JP and I go to all the time for what seems like a year at this point. And um, I always see it and I'm always kind of intrigued by the cover. And I I finally decided to just pick it up and see what it's all about. And it's called Do You Want to Know a Secret from 2001. Um, Yeah, the reason I was intrigued by it is because the title alone and uh, the cover... Seem like it's going to be an an I Know You Did Last Summer type of ripoff movie. And um, I'm kind of like the Schroyer sometimes, or Andrew in general, where uh, I get kind of taken in by these floating head movies because it reminds me of when, you know, I was a kid and all these movies were coming out and I would actually watch them. So you never know. Some of them are actually decent. And um, this one wasn't, I'll tell you. Um, But the (laughs) plot... (laughs) The plot basically is you have this group of kids, uh, college students are going on spring break and they go to Florida. They have a house down there. It's got like a boat and a pool and all that. And uh, it's by the beach and um, everything's going great. And then all of a sudden this stalker starts, um, you know, hunting them down one by one. And um, every time he like kills someone or shows up, he writes, do you want to know a secret? Like, on the wall or something like that. And that's kind of the movie. It's a basic slasher. Um, I thought I would have fun with it and it might be kind of cool. And um, I, I'm always intrigued by ripoff type of films, but this one was just super boring. Um, it took, it felt like it took forever for things to get going and to actually see any kills. And once you finally do, um, they're pretty poorly done. Like the, all you see is just some blood and it's not very gory or anything like that. It's very, it feels very low budget. The acting's pretty, um, subpar in it as well. Um, the motive of the killer is is super dumb. I mean, it's got this big buildup of, do you want to know a secret? And then by the end, you're kind of like, wait, what? Like, I don't even understand what went on here. It's, just re- really, really stupid. Um, not a fun time at all. It, and everything pretty much takes place during the daylight as well, which I know a lot of movies, of course, yeah, people could get killed in broad daylight. But the, literally there's one scene where like three people get killed at once and um, it's pretty much the entire cast and that's your big scene and it's all outside by this pool when it's sunny out and it's just not not scary or effective. Um, overall, uh not a great movie. Um, I just kind of <laughs> wanted to pick up something random while we were there. Um, we usually like buy three DVDs when we go there, and I figured, ah, oh, why not finally grab this one? It's been staring at me for all these months, and I did, and I regretted it, and uh, give it a three out of ten. So, yeah, man, we so a ra- on par with <laughs> Return of the Slasher Nurse, then. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean. I don't know. Yours is like two to four, Man. mine's three. So it, your, yours could be better than mine, but it could be less. Man, we're on a roll tonight with the uh, the good ones. Yeah. So how many um, times? So every time you guys go to this DVD store, how many times has JP asked the owner if he can sign up for some screeners? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, no. You know, one time I did get the owner to um, separate the horror DVDs from all. So when you go in yeah, there, JP. there's the horror section and then everything else. Yeah. Nice. Nice. That's yeah, because I was it. tired of picking through hundreds of titles looking for new shit. Dude, I hate that when you go to those secondhand places and they have everything like all together. It's so annoying. The only thing you can do at that point, I know you probably wouldn't, JP, because you don't really collect them. But when I go when I go into a secondhand store like that or a pawn I shop, base. I that's how I scan. I don't even read titles. Well, I literally don't enough, read titles. I look for anchor the original Anchor Bay, and I'll. And then I'll see it and I'll pull one out and I'm like, oh, got it. And then I'll just keep going. <laughs> Funny enough, do I Smart. not do that though, Carly? Yeah. I, I actually do, even though I don't buy them. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> Unless I'm, it's one that I don't have. I don't think I'm honestly being that original with it. I think a lot of collectors do that. They scan for the Anchor Bay. I look for <laughs> Anchor DVDs. Bay, Blue Underground, like any of the, the yeah. you know, things I know. But it's funny because every once in a while they'll get them. With, like they have a couple of Shriek sh- old Shriek shows in there, like some Gene Rollins and stuff. Oh, wow. Crazy. Uh, and uh, they had some blue undergrounds there recently. Nice. Um, they had like all those Italian movies. That's where I got the card player because you know people must just drop off their collections there sometimes, and you get lucky. But the card player was released. Times, that was an original Anchor Bay really release, yep. right? Yeah, yeah. I have that one. Yeah, and I was trying to explain to Carly what like she asked, "What the hell is an original Anchor Bay or something?" <laughs> and I explained to her that I showed her like four different Anchor Bay logos. I'm like, "This logo trash. This logo okay, but still trash. This one 
good, but this one's the best. <laughs> yeah, the original and now sailboat. Now I pay attention to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. But okay, so what did, else did you get when you went there? Because you said you bought three movies. Wait, what else? I was you're with me that day. What else did I, I get there? I know you got Wait. Stoker because okay, you yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Stoker, and I was oh like, yeah, I got Stoker. On That's oil. a good movie. <clears throat> Told you. She don't believe me whenever I recommend. No, I, I no, I don't. It's just I hate when I'm looking for movies and then he recommends like all three and I feel like I didn't get to really search for anything myself. Yeah, like it kind of takes fun of it. <laughs> all right, dude. Well, like in that case, I didn't really have much. So yeah, I got Stoker, got that movie, and then I picked up Stan Helsing, which is a horrible parody oh, movie that I saw. Good. I actually yeah, don't mind Stan Helsing. I, I remember thinking it was trash, but I, I want to rewatch it because I saw it when I was when it probably first came out. When did that so. shit come out? Like ten years ago, twelve years ago, or some shit. Probably when all those other bad ones were coming out, yeah. like Epic Movie. I have a copy Super of that Trip. movie, and I think it's still sealed in my room. I bought it when, it's, <laughs> yeah, it was like five dollars or something. I've never watched it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, by the way, Carly, I have two, three, and four scary movies. We were wondering that. Yeah. The- First, wait, oh, two, three, and four. Two, okay. three, and four, yeah. Okay, so you got the middle, John. You need one and five. Yeah. Weird. Uh, okay, so continuing along here, uh, my third and final film is actually one that I just watched before we did the show, um, and that is Child's Play 2019. Mm-hmm. Moots, have you seen this? Still no. Okay, it's so expensive. I'll be – I won't spoil too much then. Um, yeah, I saw this in the theater. I got the screener from Universal and I was like, hey, let me rewatch this so they don't yell at me for not talking about it. Um, and speaking of screeners, right? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So as we know, this is a, this is a remake, um, of Child's Play. And the setup is basically this Caslin Corporation in, I believe Vietnam is putting together these dolls because these are new high tech dolls. Think of like, you know, Amazon Alexa and all that shit that all pairs with everything. We're like, turn on the lights or something. All the Bluetooth and stuff are all paired together. Now all that crap. Um, so the, the buddy doll B U D D I is actually, um, kind of a, Surprised uh, this thing doesn't come from Canada. Segue to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not your friend, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm not your friend, buddy. <laughs> um, but so it, it's kind of like a Bluetooth thing, and it can it can pair with your TV and car and all kind of stuff like that. Um, this disgruntled employee basically takes all the security stuff out of the doll, um, and it gets shipped to America. Um, its eyes are like all red and shit. And um, somebody brings it back. Uh, meanwhile, there's good old Karen Barkley who's working at this uh, retail store. And she basically gets the doll for her son because she's kind of poor because she's working at a retail store. Um, and her son, Andy, um, they just moved into a new apartment. He's kind of a weird kid. He has hearing problems. Um, and he basically is um, kind of has no friends. Uh, so he gets this little buddy doll. It doesn't seem to work right, kind of malfunctions and stuff, but it definitely seems like very uh, aware. Like it, it's learning things, uh, and you, you know, it's fucking child's play, right? So of course the doll like goes haywire, kind of, but it does it in a different way. This is a, this is actually the appropriate way to remake a film, where you take the core basic concept and do something different, and that's ex- exactly what they did in this film because it's not charles lee ray it's not the possessed soul of a serial killer it's technology run amok that's what it is um and it's done in sort of a fun way where it's like this uh he's actually very likable like the, the chucky doll is very likable uh, mark hamill's voice is is really good um it's no brad duroff but it's different it's in a different way like brad duroff is a serial killer this is a robotic doll so it makes sense that it would be different. Um, and you feel bad because Chucky is kind of like, you know, he's trying to help Andy. Like Andy is complaining that his cat scratched him. And Chucky's like, I don't want the cat to hurt Andy. And he fucking kills the cat. You know what I mean? So it's it's done in this sort of different way. And it's really neat. And then there's also 
um, the kills are probably the best part of it. You know, there's or one of the best parts. There's uh, good kills in this one. Um, my favorite one is like a nod to some chainsaw, which is really awesome. Two films in 2019 nodding to chainsaw. That's really cool. Um, there's like a direct nod to chainsaw two in this film, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so, uh, the movie is very fun, man. And, and I like that the direction they went with the technology runs amok because it's completely different than the other film. So it feels fresh enough to where you're not like, oh, they're just rehashing the same fucking thing over and over again. Like, what? there's an original series going on. Why even reboot it? But it's like, okay, both of these can exist. Like, you can still have Don Mancini's series with Charles Lee Ray, the killer doll, and technology run amok buddy dolls um, because they're completely different. Uh, so I like it. I like that they did it. And I was shockingly surprised when I saw this in theater. Uh, how much I enjoyed it. It was just a fun movie. I, I really was surprised with that. And um, they did they did a couple things right. You know, they changed the story enough. It's a little unbelievable. You know, it, it, you have to suspend your disbelief, especially once it starts controlling cars and stuff. I felt like that was a little too much. Um, but at the same but, time, man, what do you think vehicles are nowadays? They're just computers. Yeah, I know, right? <clears throat> uh so it, it does enough of changing the story and making it fresh. And then they actually did a good job. Like everybody's like, oh, the doll looks horrible. The doll looks horrible. But they're, they're forgetting that this doll is plastic and rubber. It's not turning human like Charles Lee Ray. It looks like a doll. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it, 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 it fits what it's trying to do. It's supposed to look fake like a doll. While Chucky is supposed to look almost part human at times, you know, in the original series. So, um, the, it's, it's fucking ugly though, dude. (laughs) It is an ugly ass doll. Um, did you have one of those moments when you're watching the film, you know, before Mark Hamill spoke where you're like holding your breath going, "Ah, I hope his voice doesn't suck. Um, yeah, kind of. Cause I think we were all worried about the voice sucking and the voice is completely different, but it fits for what it's doing. And he does a good job. Like yeah. he sounds very likable. It fits like the children's play toy and stuff. And yeah. it's it, like, he sings uh, this fucking buddy song. <laughs> I am <laughs> your buddy. Yeah, yeah. I, I was never afraid that the voice would suck. My main concern was like the fact that they voice cast Mark Hamill that, once you like heard him talking as Chucky, it would kind of take you out. Like, holy shit, that's Mark Hamill. But he really does a good job to. Yeah, he changes his voice yeah. enough to where it's not like. But the well, thing oh, is, that's Mark Hamill. You know, but Mark Hamill is like a seasoned veteran with the voice. You mm-hmm. know, because he plays you know the Joker in fucking so many DC animated films, right? Yeah, and, he, and he's fucking awesome in those too, man. He's like really good. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, it, I think that. The characters are likable. The mother's likable. Andy's likable. Um, it's the the Chucky dolls, honestly likable, and then you know, but still kind of villainous, but not really. Um, it's a good movie, honestly. I, I really like it, and um, I actually think it's much better than Cult of Chucky, which was the last Don Mancini one. Um, and I would actually probably rank this somewhere in the middle of the franchise. I'd say like one, two, and three, still ahead of it maybe curse of chucky ahead of it and then this one then everything else <clears throat> so it's definitely it was definitely worth the 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 make it was worth being made um i gave it an eight out of ten hmm yeah i've been really curious on that i really want to check it out so it'll be soon i'll get all these watches in before the end of the year so yeah. do you th- do you think that's like a top tenner for you this year because uh, my just... top 10 list is actually pretty competitive now it wasn't for the longest time <clears throat> but i have i have like i have about five films that are like definitely going to be in my top 10 i couldn't see them being pulled out and then i have like another four or so films that are probably ahead of this one still but um yeah i still have a lot to see too there's a lot there's a lot still coming yeah out, there's so. five or six pretty heavy hitters i still need to see and stuff yeah you haven't seen midsommar you haven't seen climax yeah child's play mm. three from hell you yeah. know i don't that's really in my top 10 but um yeah there's some heavy hitters you just still need to get to that's yeah that's a couple i haven't seen ready or not yet 
Um, mm. I, st- I want to check out Knife Plus Heart. I heard, you know, that seems like it's up my alley. Even though I heard it's... Yeah, I haven't seen it. But um, have you seen um, Tigers Not Afraid yet? Nope. But I hear that's really good, too. Yeah, that one's fucking... Excellent. It's fucking yeah. solid, man. Have you seen Crawl? Mm-hmm. Oh, Crawl's another one I still need to see, too. Yeah, Crawl is really fun. I have, a, I think I have a screener coming in of that, too. Yeah. Mooj, don't you have a movie theater there? <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, said I went to Toy see... Story 4 for the 800. Yeah, I, I know. Like we have, there's there's six theaters at the cinema there, and there was only five being used. Like I think, I think the Joker was playing in two of them last night. But we get we get big movies like that, and kids movies. Yay me! Yay you need me. to just take all that money that you've made not working, mm-hmm. and. Put it to fucking all the Patreon. Make money? it open your yeah that. <laughs> Take your sack of Patreon money and open a goddamn theater and run what you want. Well, me and Dylan were talking about this, man. We went, we were at this theater not too long ago, and I was like, dude, I was like, man, we got to open up our own cinema, man, like hundred percent. But motherfucker's getting married next year, so he's got a lot of money tied up because <laughs> we were like being serious <laughs> about it. <laughs> I'm like, let's do this shit. <laughs> this fucking guys being serious about opening a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> It would probably be successful. I, if I if I could, man, I would do it, man. And yeah, I would. I would fucking do it. Yeah, it's just, there's just I a lot of complications. It. I mean, if you want to start showing older films, it's like you know getting the rights to show it, and it's just there's a lot of headaches involved in it, man. Yeah. Uh, well, honestly, I talked to my uh, guy at the waterfront that we go to because I got him to play Blair Witch next week, mm-hmm. um, and he said it's really not that complicated once you have the contacts. Yeah, well, um, certain not... studios won't do anything like Disney won't let their films be shown at all. But like Lionsgate, like all the main ones, like super easy. Uh huh. It depends the, on the type when, of films when you're, you're talking about. <clears throat> yeah, the the studio titles easy stuff that like is not studio like more like it uh, le- less studio based is probably harder. Yeah, big time. Um, I actually have a buddy that lives in Calgary. <laughs> you have a buddy that lives in Calgary. Uh, he runs the Night Terrors Film Society, and they basically do that. Like they they have a cinema there, they have a theater there. And they show mostly like older, like 70s and 80s films and stuff. But he said, it's not even the money. A lot of the times you can, con- if you can get in contact with who has the rights to the films and stuff, they usually only charge like maybe 200 bucks, 300 bucks to do a showing. Hmm. But sometimes like they want to, they, they show generally pretty obscure shit. Every once in a while they'll show, like they showed Maniac a couple months ago and they did Reanimator and stuff. But a lot of times they'll, they'll go out and get some pretty obscure ones. And it's trying to find who has the rights. Is the yeah. pain in the fucking I ass? They, get, I would be good at that. And they usually have like I mean, they con- me. well, the thing is, this guy he fucking knows everybody too. It's like that's how obscure some of these films are and shit. And they played films without having the rights before, like some of the trailers and shit like that. And they'll splice them together. And they have like mounds and mounds of fucking trailers on you know print. And they, and that's all they show is thirty five millimeter too, right? So and yeah, because the the guys that run this, they both collect. Um, actually the guy I'm talking about, he was the guys, he was the dude that 88 films used his print for the burial ground, Blu-ray transfer, Greg. Yeah. Cool. yeah it's his name's actually in the credits and everything. So it's a guy I meet up with at uh, um, the Calgary Horicon. every really cool guy, really, really cool guy. He's got an amazing story with him and Gene Roland. Like, it's just amazing. The story <laughs> It's like awesome. So <clears throat> anyways, I digress. Uh, my last film for the night is a film from 2017. Uh, it's new to us in 2019. Uh, Shutter exclusive, and it is called One Cut of the Dead. Uh, anyone seen this? It's not called The Furries. The what? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Uh, straight out of Japan. Um, I just came to the realization that this is kind of a hard movie to to review without spoiling the shit out of it. Yep, it is. And yes, I have seen it. We just did a fresh cuts on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was talking to them. I knew that you did that. So, well, do you want to help out a brother on this one? Do you want to talk about this film with me? I mean, it's hard to, I like you said, it's hard to say too much without, because yeah. it. Well, how do you something, even approach something, this? I would say there's a couple of events that happen in it that you really cannot say anything about that kind of change the movie. Um, I. I mean, my my basic thoughts on it is I thought it was awesome. I liked it. I think it's for a micro budget movie. I think it's 
it's very well done. Um, I think when the curtain gets pulled back at two different points in the movie, they they both work. Uh, it's the movie has a lot of charm. I think it's it it's a movie that you know if people see it at a young age, it would inspire them to make movies. It's that style of movie to me. <laughs> yeah, I think um, so. I, just, I agree, though, man. I think it's one of the mo- I think it's one of the more unique zombie films that has come out in the last long time. I mean, that's one of the problems that we've mentioned many many times on the show is that when zombie films get made, they're generally just there's nothing really original about them. You know, they're just mm-hmm. kind of, we've seen, we've seen that before. Every once in a while, something will come out and you're like, oh, that's a little bit different. But this one actually is a lot different. Uh, and not only in narrative, but in structure. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's mm-hmm. basically the first like 30 minutes of this film is like this crazy zombie apocalypse. And then something happens, you know, at, there's a point where it just kind of shifts. And I got to say, man, the way they film this movie and the way they they did everything is absolutely fucking brilliant. It's, yeah, and, and it's something you really haven't. I mean, I'm sure if we dug hard enough, we could find similar things. But it felt like watching something new and fresh, like like you said, a new take on mm-hmm. the genre. And that, it, it kind of had a smile on my face. <clears throat> like definitely, the first thirty minutes, I I love that too. But that last what was it an hour i think it, yeah, i had a though. smile on my face as as things unfold and you're really putting together what's going on i mean it i had a smile on my face the whole time most of the i mean every character or in their their portrayals I, there's a lot of charm to it it's 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 really uh an entertaining um movie yeah. it's execution yeah i got to say like the main character and the guy that you see on the poster out here man he was awesome i loved his character man there's just there's just a lot of cool ass characters and and uh man this is a really hard movie to talk about holy shit yeah i didn't even I, think, I think about this going into this this is crazy like you you honestly can't say anything because you will ruin yeah what... we had a very short general thought segment because like say. we're like we just like did the ultimate spoiler like don't listen to the rest of the show if you haven't seen it i i do like there's um i think one of the coolest aspects is certain events happen in that first half hour and then when you kind of revisit things later for because of what you find out yeah it's it's really cool kind of revisiting those moments and seeing them from another well, it's, perspective it's, it's cool seeing them how they unfold and shit like that mm-hmm. and i thought that was really unique and honestly man it kind of gives you a really interesting perspective of just film in general take it how you will i don't want to say anything further than that but it's and and honestly, like the core idea of what they're doing is actually pretty unique too. Oh yeah, for sure. I yeah. think that's a really interesting and awesome idea, and yeah, definitely a film that is really fucking hard to talk about. But it is you know available on Shutter right now. One Cut of the Dead. Uh, if you're into zombie films and you want something you know fresh and unique and definitely fun and, and full of charm, like full of charm. Uh, there's definitely lots of blood flown in this one and shit like that and full of fun ass characters and shit good comedy um beautifully shot uh, just check out one cut of the dead man it's really worth your time it's really damn hard to talk about without spoiling the shit out of it and it's one of those movies i really would not want to spoil for you because it's good yeah i agree i mean half of the fun is piecing together everything as it unfolds so you really don't want to know too it, much I, going on it's super what did you rate it uh, I'm going to come in at a 9 out of 10 on this one. Oh, Damn. all right. We might have to do that on Netflix and chill, Carly. Yeah, for we'll sure. Do you, guys spoil, like... do you guys spoil films on there? No. But then this is like, it's super hard oh. to talk about. <laughs> yeah. There, there's not going to be much There's not gonna be much <laughs> chilling. Like, it's so <laughs> yes. hard to talk. You can't even, like, say anything. It's No, there's going to be plenty of chill and not a whole lot of Netflix in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's definitely one of those things where it's unique. You know, it, for a film itself, but it's even unique that you can't really talk about it too much. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, even stuff I've said, I'm like, shit. Am I? Even I know. I was really trying to much? watch, and I never thought about it until like it was my turn to go, and I'm like, wait a minute, how the fuck do I talk about this movie? <laughs> exactly. That's. Cr- I'm glad that you're on actually, because I would have sucked without you. <laughs> I would have been like, what the hell am I saying, man? That's crazy. Wait, no, no, you still suck, even with me here. Well, if you had to rate that one, what would you rate it? <laughs> Um, I mean, I would be up there 
Don't Fuck you, you man. I'm going to get my flat of beer right now, you fucking dick. <laughs> I, I heard what you said. I just caught on to that. <laughs> what a dick. Well, maybe after drinking a flat of beer, you'll be better. No, I'm just kidding. Um, shit, what'd you say, nine? Mm-hmm. I mean, I tend to not give things that high of a rating after one watch, but I'll, I'll go ahead and say eight for now. I mean, it's definitely something I'm going to revisit. So, you know, I'll go with eight. But either way... It's it's really good. Everyone should watch it. And I think you mentioned that it was on Shutter now, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So Shutter anyone on Shutter, watch it. All right. All right, Mikey, back to you. Oh yeah, it's nice. okay. So uh, this one's on Netflix. I think it's been on there for maybe two, three weeks. It's kind of in the last two, three weeks we've been hit with this like barrage of like. Stuff hitting Shutter, Netflix, yeah, VOD. So every it's like, year around this time, yeah, it's like, created mm-hmm. this huge backlog. Where like up until then, I, I felt like somewhat confident. I was current on most of the things I knew about, but man, in the past two weeks, I've gotten so behind. So this is one that's kind of, I think, kind of hit towards the beginning of that period, and it kind of got buried by other stuff that I was watching, probably for shows and just like bigger uh, movies that I was anticipating. So I kind of. Uh, randomly just pick this one to kind of catch up on it's a head count has anyone else seen this one no, i never even heard of it no i was right. actually gonna watch it earlier today and then i just didn't but okay so basically the setup for this one is i mean it's the setup's not too out of the ordinary uh friends head out to uh go doing what young people do they're kind of out in the middle of nowhere uh partying well actually it starts with a uh the guy and his brother they're they're kind of reconnecting obviously it, it's set up where like they've had past issues um but they're out in the in the desert kind of uh having like a reconnection uh between siblings you know and they run into like a a group of friends that are also out there doing their own thing uh, so they decide to kind of party together and they get back to the house where they're all staying and then weird stuff, little odd things start happening at first and it kind of mounts, you know, and it kind of goes from there where little things start becoming bigger, um, little oddities going around. I don't really want to say what's happening. Obviously you don't want to spoil anything. So, you know, as far as my thoughts, you know, I thought this movie was, it had a really good setup, and I liked what they were going for, but I thought it was a little sloppy in its execution and delivery. Um, the characters, you know, kind of your stereotypical young 20s uh, people. But, you know, I'm kind of conflicted with this one because this is one of those movies where, you know, as I'm watching it, I, I like kind of like the uh, – I like the table they're setting. I thought it was very interesting, the concept. It's just, it, 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 it starts getting convoluted. And by the end, you're just like kind of ready for it to just be over. I mean, um, so, you know, if I had to rate it, I would probably say like a six, uh, which uh, to me, it's not a bad rating. It's just kind of in the middle. Obviously, six is it's in the middle of a one through 10. But um, yeah, it's. It's hard to talk about these things by yourself if no one else has seen it, but I would I would say it's worth checking out though. Uh, it is like I said, it is on Netflix. I had heard a little bit about this from people um, leading up to me watching it. Like I said, there's just so much stuff hit that I was highly anticipating that this one kind of got pushed kind of to the back. But I, I still think it's it was uh, a decent movie. Um, so I would say go check it out uh, and. See what you guys got to say about it. Cool. Cool. Carly. All right. So lastly, I'm going to go with a movie that came out in 2016, but it kind of, um, you know, fell under or just something I never really got to. And I've always wanted to see. And Derek actually sent me this movie out of the kindness of his heart. So I finally got to check it out. And that is the barn. Um, yeah, so The Barn pretty much follows um, these two high school seniors named Sam and Josh, and um, as well as their <clears throat> other group of friends. Um, Sam and Josh, they're, you know, really into Halloween, and um, they're kind of, they're essentially like kids when it comes to Halloween. They still want to have fun trick-or-treat and all that, and the 
adults in the town kind of roll their eyes at them and say like, oh, you really want to, you know, go down and be the legendary people in this town who were so into Halloween and pulled pranks and all that. And um, so, you know, they have that going for them, but um, they kind of just, you know, shrug it off. And then you have uh, this other group of friends that they're involved with as well. And they're on their way to this concert when they go through this um, weird town. I believe it's called like Death Vale or something crazy like that. And they happen upon this abandoned barn in the middle of nowhere. And they essentially accidentally awaken this evil demonic presence inside. And um, it awakens these three characters known as the Boogeyman, Hollow Jack, and the Candy Corn Scarecrow. And um, these characters oh, is basically... Is this the same Hollow Jack that's in Halloween Jack? No. Um, I want to say no. <laughs> yeah. but um... S- Similar, but no. <laughs> Not quite. Um, so yeah, and then these uh, characters, these uh, demonic, I guess you would say they're like demons, kind of come back to the town and uh, wreak havoc oh. on everybody there. And uh, Sam and Josh kind of feel they need to step it up and uh, try to keep these creatures from destroying the town and everyone in it. So yeah, uh, I really dug this one. Um, the atmosphere is spot on for Halloween time. I really enjoyed the just color scheme of the movie. It's got a lot of purples and reds and oranges just throughout the entire film that really um hammer in that halloween feel um movie definitely is um has kind of a low budget feel to it but it's not like one of those horrible low budget movies this is how you would do a movie that is low budget in my opinion and make it entertaining it's set in 1989 um i don't really feel that it feels very throwbackish. I did see the trailer and I thought that was awesome. I think that's done really well for the movie, but the movie itself, I feel like the characters um, just look very modern. Um, and the only thing that really makes it feel kind of old is there's not really technology or anything like that. But other than that, it kind of feels modern. That's not a big complaint or anything, but you know, just kind of to mention. Um, but overall, I, I really liked it. Um, the characters you know, especially the uh, pumpkin guy, I guess that would be the Hallowed Jack guy. Uh, I really dug the way they look. Um, it's very creepy and just cool. The costumes are fantastic. And the uh, there's a scene at this party where, uh, you know, they kind of break in and they start killing people in this big massacre type of thing. And, uh, you know, the gore in it, uh, while it's kind of fake looking, I also think it's kind of gross. And uh, they really utilize it pretty well in this movie. I was actually eating dinner while watching it, and I got kind of grossed out. So I stopped for a little bit. But, um, you know, overall, I think it's really good. Um, It's one that I would definitely put on rotation around Halloween time, as it does have the perfect... Halloween feel to it, and I give this one a 7.5 out of 10. It's like one of my favorites the last few years, man. I love the way they... <laughs> that made your top 10 mids of yeah. 2016, I, I believe. I, yeah, I fucking love this movie. I've watched it every year since. I love nice. the way they can, like, the idea that they came up with, like, trying, or the way they can kill those characters and shit, like the pumpkin jack or whatever the fuck his name is. Mm-hmm. It's fucking cool, man. I thought it was actually really well done. Another, another yeah. way you can tell... I do agree that the characters do... They look a little bit modern, but I mean, there's a synth soundtrack too that's actually really awesome too. So yeah, it, the, it actually reminded one part in the barn. It reminds me of like the Halloween soundtrack, like the whole score and everything. Yeah, and man. I really like that. That made it feel um, but, like but, an old eighty slasher. Yeah, that atmosphere mixed in with the the whole Halloween aesthetic is like spot on in this man. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's fucking awesome. Uh, something cool about this. I don't know if you <clears throat> know Carly, but um, it's a hometown boy kind of. They made this film. I think I, I think I did know that actually. Yeah, uh, dude. Oh, sorry, dude from Claysville, which is like about forty minutes away from us. Okay, uh, yeah, actually, I, I knew that because Derek said he like ordered this from the, the company, and he was like, "Are you by Claysville?" And I was like, "Yeah, actually, I'm pretty darn close to Claysville," and that's kind of how. Yeah, it's yeah. west of us. It's almost more towards West Virginia. It's definitely closer to West Virginia than us, but um, yeah, it's uh, he's. I know that this actually we had a chance to see this in one of its premieres at the drive-in, the Riverside. It played there one year. Oh, really? Yeah, like when we went for our September thing, Uh it was showing in October. Remember they were talking like indie horror night. Oh, 
oh okay yeah i didn't remember what movies they were playing but i do yeah this yeah. was one of them and um the barn 2 actually met its goal on indiegogo um, yeah i was gonna contribute year. to that and i completely forgot yeah it was, was looking for um dollars. That's pretty um, specific. And it ended up with um, $46,000. So, nice. Wow. Yeah. So apparently they're working on the barn too, which is cool. I still have yet to see this one, but I should have supported it because oh. you know, this guy's local. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you were even fucking ripping on me. You're like, how the fuck can that movie make your top 10? I haven't seen it. That can't be top 10 material. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now he's talking it up like he's fucking seen the thing. <laughs> I didn't know. No, I honestly, didn't know when I was it. seeing the preview, I didn't think it looked that good. I thought it looked like, I thought it looked like it was trying a bit hard on the aesthetic, <clears throat> and it came off like it fake. But I, I don't know. I was just maybe I was a little too hard on it. But, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean. Honestly, dude, we all make that mistake because I even said recently that the Joker trailer didn't look that didn't make the movie look that great. But but someone oh. someone adverted to me and said, you know, usually those are the type of the trailers that turn out to be really great films. Lo and behold, I love that trailer. Lo and behold, yeah, I'm just I, I think it's because I don't really watch a lot of modern trailers anymore. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, eh, whatever. But but uh, yeah, that is it. That is uh, it for the dub dub portion of the show. Wow, that was very long. The what we? Yeah, I was hiccuping. Sorry, the dub 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 portion of the show, and yeah, we'll be back with uh, the re- re- the featured reviews in a minute here. And now, our feature presentation. Alrighty, jumping into the featured reviews here on episode 162. And it is, I guess, our first anime episode? Yeah. Yep. Featured review animes. Uh, oddly enough, both of these movies that we're doing tonight are actually from the year 1985, so it makes complete sense to watch these because we had to anyways and do a featured reviews on them. So, uh, First up, man, we'll start with this one uh, from the year 1985, and it is called Angel's Egg. Yeah, this was a Patreon show by... I forget who gave it to us. I'm sorry. Uh, he basically picked Vampire Hunter D, and we were like, okay, you want to give us one? We will one-up it and make a show out of it. Um, oh, that's how it came about, because Mike even asked yeah. me how the show came about, and I was like, I can't remember if it was JP's <laughs> idea or mine, because I remember us talking about doing an anime show, and it just, everything kind of clicked. I'm like, we need to prep yeah. for the 85, we have this. That's right, the Vampire D, that was the connection. That's right. Yeah, I just said we need to review Vampire Hunter D, and then you suggested we do a two film double sh- like a f- full sh- featured show yeah just do something a little bit different we've never done a full you know anime type thing so why not do these ones um yeah. so uh synopsis i'll read this off indb because they're so trustworthy with it a mysterious young girl wanders a desolate otherworldly landscape landscape carrying a large egg that's pretty much sums it up yeah. yeah, that's pretty much the whole movie. <laughs> fucking Fellowship of the Egg. Lord of the Egg. <laughs> Dude, that is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Remember in Clerks 2 when he's like, fucking I mean, the whole movie's walking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I thought of when I was watching it. Dude, that is so funny, man. It's so perfect. I didn't think of that, but that's pretty good. <laughs> Speaking of that, Clerks 3 just got announced. So. I know, I'm stoked yeah. on that. I'm super stoked on that. Um, But yeah, Angel's Egg, man. Um. You know, I this is a first time watch for me, and at, clearly after watching, <clears throat> you know, all seventy one minutes of this, which is very short. I mean, this is very typical. I think of anime I think movies. That's so too. perfect for <clears throat> an anime horror film, though. Like, I yeah. feel like mm-hmm. it doesn't need to be any longer than that. I mean, given the, I mean, given what the story or the narrative is here compared to you know Vampire Hunter D and stuff. I mean, there's a little bit more going on there, which 
you know, isn't really much longer. It's only about nine minutes longer, ten minutes longer than this one. Um, this is probably the artsiest animated film I've ever seen in my life. This is really like, I mean, this one took my head for a fucking trip because it's not very often I watch a movie and go, holy fuck. Like, I think this movie can be interpreted a million different ways. And I didn't really look into things after I didn't really have the time today to, you know, check out people's interpretations and shit. I mean, really, the only interpretation I could get from this was it's just a huge metaphor for, you know, life. And, you know, it's, it's, it's very biblical. Yeah. That's why I'm like, um, it's very biblical. I mean, there's there's lots of symbols in this film dealing with, you know, the regeneration of, you know, the the coming of Christ and stuff. Maybe the egg is representing life and, or, you know, it goes back to the old question, you know, what comes first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. And I think it kind of plays into that. But she there's really only like two characters in this movie. It's her. There's so much little dialogue too. there's about like, maybe 15 to 20 lines of dialogue. So. I will set it up by saying this movie is super atmospheric. It's very, very dark and kind of desolate. And it has that kind of very dreary appeal to it because it's set in like a wasteland environment. So I'm assuming that the world is ended and this egg is representing restarting life as they know it. Mm. I'm not sure if the person that she meets up with is actually a, like a real person or if it's if it's God himself. Because he is holding a cross over his shoulder the entire film, which I'm assuming yeah. is the symbol for, you know, the Jesus. egg is, is, well, the, the egg is Jesus. And essentially, once he gets reborn, um, then they're going to pin him to a cross. Exactly. And the, he has <laughs> to die again to, you know, to, for man's sins and shit like that. That's what I gathered out of this. And that's really all I could get out of it. Yeah. Um, it's very artsy and it's very, it's almost like it's very downbeat and shit. Yeah. I'm just like fucking crazy. Like the Listen, monotone soundtrack was like, holy fuck. Uh, this is depressing yeah. to, it was like depressing to watch, but <laughs> super beautiful though. Really beautiful. Yeah. I, 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 the only thing I could take away from this film truly is that the visuals are actually like breathtaking in a way. Like it is just, I, I was very entertained watching this girl walk, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Through this desolate wasteland of, of, depression and mm. the music and the w- uh, coupled with the just visuals just worked really well i think it's a very like experimental just like um animation uh you know showcase like it's just it's just showcasing this beautiful animation um and i love dark animation especially from this era like 70s and 80s animation um i'm not an anime fan per se but you know i like I guess American animation from this time period too. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't know. It was, it was very appealing to look at. Um, and be, since it wasn't so long, it was very easy to watch, but I wouldn't say that I took a lot away plot wise. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I think the, the strong point was its imagery, kind of like the dreary, setting um i i i will say the one thing that really like kept me hooked in was kind of like the the mystery developing of like what's this egg all about obviously there's some type of symbolism there and importance so it held my attention because i wanted to see where they kind of went with it i agree with mood's assessment that's if i had to guess you know without researching or looking anything up for a definitive answer i'd kind of agree with mood's um, inter- interpretation of it that it kind of represented the regeneration of life. Obviously, we get the where the egg kind of uh, breaks, and we get the repopulation of all those eggs at the end, and that kind of like and, you know uh, finishes the movie off there. But you know, I'm also with JP. I'm not necessarily an anime guy. There, I, there are animes I like, but you know, I'm yeah, not Dragon I'm Ball not, Z. <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, <laughs> I, I'm not the I'm, I'm not the person that like turn on Netflix and go to like the anime section and like look for something to watch. It's it's you most anime I've seen was when I was younger and stuff like recommended to me. Um, which the next movie we'll talk about is one of those. Um, but you know I, I I liked it for what it is. I don't think it's something that like I need to rush and rush out and watch again. But um, you know I. I I was entertained by it. It's just you have to kind of be prepared. You know, I, I definitely wasn't prepared because I didn't know anything about this. So when we're like a half hour in and 
she's still basically the only character besides the other guy and there's little talking um i kind of had to like set myself up there okay this is just what this movie's gonna be and uh i mm-hmm. i was okay with it you know from there on out yeah yeah um yeah for me like i kind of looked up the movie first and like the first description i see of it said yeah this movie they don't we don't really consider it a movie it's more of just a piece of art so i kind of knew what i was getting into really uh, yeah, if you, look up, if you type it in, it says something like that on one of the descriptions. And yeah. I was like, okay, so I know this isn't going to have much dialogue or um, plot to it. And I will say the lack of dialogue is what uh, kind of kept me interested because I find that even with just regular movies, you know, not animation or anything, movies where there's not a ton of dialogue, I feel like I have to just keep watching and stay invested to see because I'm looking to see when something's going to happen or something's going to be said. So that definitely kept me intrigued. Um, the, the ominous music in it, I think, is fantastic. Um, it's mm. very dreary and uh, just, you know, sets up the horror aspects to it that I really enjoy. Um and, you know, like you guys said, the animation's fantastic. Um, just the look of the girl and um, just the whole town or whatever you want to call it that she's walking around is just so detailed and um, interesting. It doesn't really look like other anime, and I'm definitely not an anime fan. I mean, I've had friends who are really into it try to get me into it, and I can appreciate it, but I don't see what they're seeing. Like, I would never seek this out on my own um you could show me it probably a million times and i just would not you know like mike said i'm not going to go in the anime section of netflix or anything like that and be like oh this is a good anime this is a bad one i just don't i just don't get the appeal but you know overall um any themes i got from it were kind of hopelessness and just um loneliness and to me it's like the egg just felt like the only thing that girl really had to hold on to and i guess look forward to and it was kind of just something that she held precious to her but yeah, yeah that, um, made, that makes sense i mean in a world yeah. of nothing it's like she it gave her purpose yeah, yeah it it's, gave it's her purpose. like a child yeah. like holding their blanket their only baby blanket or something that's kind of what i felt like yeah i i feel I like it had to be her vibe. purpose i feel like it had to be her purpose because there wasn't really she may have been mm-hmm. the only person around besides the the enemy people that were like throwing spears at ghost fish <laughs> yeah. see that that threw, that fucked with my head i was like i have no idea what this is symbolizing at all i mean there is a point in the film where they actually do bring up the 40 days and 40 nights and noah's ark and things like that and how yeah. everybody dies so it's very very biblical and you know at the core mm-hmm. of this kind of narrative but if, if you want to call it a narrative but unfortunately i'm not really too in depth with um you know the whole bible and stuff like i know a little bits of these stories and shit but i don't know it to a t i really don't mm-hmm. so either <clears throat> yeah, so I can't really go on that, but you know, I never really found myself as being an anime fan. Is either. that is that Japan? Is what do Japanese believe? J- Japanese people? What is their main religion? Uh, I don't know. I don't really like. I, said, I don't really know much about religion. <laughs> I didn't that. know that. Um, know. Like this seemed very American, or not American, but like you know, like um, Eastern European type catholic christian religion i didn't know if that also was yeah i mean the cross I, on... i'm i'm fucking clueless on religion dude i have no fucking it's, idea yeah. <laughs> no i don't yeah i'm not really 100 percent sure but, but i was surprised to hear like noah's ark and a japanese mm-hmm. thing but for all i know it could be like they're all christians over there or something no i don't think so i think there's different religions over there so <laughs> now now that you they, bring they that have up religion just... but uh, I mean, if we're talking about modern society, though, I think it's a pretty secular society. Yeah, but it, it definitely I, I know they do have – it's like religion. They have religious people. I think it's just kind of se- different sections of people are different things. There's not like one main dominant religion, I don't think. You know, like fucking – are monks – no, they're from fucking – China. 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 Chinese, yeah. See, yeah, I'm all Buddhist. Kind of like assholes. And Buddhist and shit like that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. I just, I mean, Christ, dude, I have religion right in my family. Like, my, my wife's dad is a pastor, right? So, and I just don't know shit because I've never really been religious at all. Like, I just don't really, I believe in science. So, it's just the way I kind of am. But I never really th- found myself thinking I would be like an anime fan. You know, I watched, you know, a couple back. I remember watching Ninja Scroll back in the day and revisiting it even recently and absolutely loving it. But I haven't really seen that many, but what I've seen, I really enjoy. 
Yeah, yeah I'm actually a little more open to it because uh, Jerry had me watch Akira, which I liked. Yeah, it's awesome. And then um, Perfect Blue Akira's was really cool. good. Um, and now I actually liked Angel's Egg. Um, I'll give it a seven. So I'm I'm open, a little more open to it. I think the ones I've seen, like Akira is really good. Ghost in the Shell, Perfect Blue, Ninja Scroll I've seen. Um, Wicked City is another really great one. Wicked uh, City is just <laughs> crazy. And, of course, Vampire Hunter D. Like, I'm not too, you know, knowledgeable Fist of the, stuff. But... Fist of the North Star is pretty badass. Okay. So, yeah. See, there you go. So, like, the ones I've seen are all really good. So, I mean, kind of lucking out, I guess. But uh, what did you give it? JP7? Seven. Seven. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike, what do you rate this one? Um, I'll... Shit, I'll, I'll say six. I mean, it's there's very uh, he just drug us with the ratings. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it is because it's so damn subjective. But you know, I, I play by your rules, so uh, I'll I'll give it a six. It's just uh, you know, it's a very specific type of movie that you're watching here. I think Carly, the thing she read explains it best. It's almost more just kind of art on the screen more so than a movie itself uh i think 20 minutes in some people are going to be along for it and then other people it's going to lose them but uh you know that's kind of the nature of this type of stuff so if you're a fan of watching people walk this one's right up your alley. <laughs> i don't know i think i think that there is a narrative i think there's definitely a narrative there it's just you got to really dig for it maybe it's just open for t- open interpretation i don't know it's I think there is something there. I mean, there's so much symbolism going on, right? For sure. Mm-hmm. Like, there's things that are representing things for sure. And the the obvious biblical, you know, dialogue too, which is really kind of, it's out there. But like I said, you know, I can't. Yeah, it, too it's much there. It. It's it's there. I just think for some moviegoers. Oh, this is definitely that symbolism is not enough for no. like they, you know, yeah. they still want something on top of that. Maybe more on the surface. I think surface. what really kept me going in this one was just that <laughs> it felt, it had like this total impending doom feel mm-hmm. to it the whole time like i thought that you know that maybe there might be like some type of resolution to this but it, it really by the end of the film it's one of those ambiguous films that really kind of opens up more questions than it answers in fact mm-hmm. i don't really think it answers any questions <laughs> right yeah it, it's, it's crazy it definitely like, felt grim it, there was a grim nature to it um <clears throat> i thought I, not having known anything about this i was like what if we get to the end and like the egg breaks and there's just nothing and no, it's literally it a chicken. I thought I, dude, I watched this movie today. <laughs> oh, that would have been great if it was just a chicken. Yeah. I was <laughs> watching, I watched this film today and then I <clears throat> ripped over to, I don't know. I have such a weird schedule. So I ripped over to, flat. went to the mall. <laughs> yeah. I picked up a flat, grabbed a couple movies and then went to the gym. And as I'm running on the elliptical, I'm like thinking about the movie because I just watched it and I was I thought of that I was like fuck could you imagine a fucking egg or the thing breaks and a chicken comes out <laughs> like that would be fucking just brilliant man. I uh, mean yeah, part of me was thinking like the egg was gonna break and there was gonna be nothing in it and the and the message was gonna be that what was in it wasn't the point it was a kind of like more her just holding on to something yeah. yeah to because that was the only thing motivating her to. So I thought like it was going to be a dark ass ending when there was just nothing in the egg, but we kind of didn't get. The, I mean, I'm fine so, with what happened. I was just trying to guess. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, say it is about you know the progression of life or regenerating life and stuff like that. Just roll with me here. So it's say it's about that. What exactly do you chalk up to those characters that were throwing those spears at the? the ghost fish and shit. What the fuck is that all about? Does anybody have any idea? So if, if we are dealing with biblical things here and restarting, regenerating the world and shit, what the fuck was that all about? Like, is there any know, ideas? Bro. Cause I'm like trying to think of this. Like I said, this movie hurt my fucking head today. Not very often. I watch a movie and I'm just like, Oh my God, there's so much there, but I can't think of anything. I don't know. Maybe well, they're I'm- just hungry for fish. I know there is like that Jesus fish symbol, you know, that people put on. Oh, their yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Like I'm so, but these were like koi fish. Yeah. I think that's the kind of fish they have over there. Is yeah. It? That's just, that's just a Japanese taste. <laughs> I don't know. Well, yeah. I mean, I know a koi, yeah. Koi fish are definitely representative of that, of that area, but I don't know. It's just, this one really hurt my head. Um, 
What did you I, rate it? I'm going to give it about a seven and a half out of 10. I think it's absolutely like, it's very, very can, beautiful. It's short. And, but I, you I know, can, a little more substance would have been nice with this one, to be I, honest. It felt like an Argento can, film. On the wiki page, I can tell you what the, it says under the theme. It says, uh, prior to the production, uh, uh, Oshi, which I guess is what the director or writer says he lost his faith in Christianity and then uh, senses of cinema opine that the film seems informed by the existential desperation caused by the collapse of one's belief system. And uh, okay. <laughs> oh, Oshi, then Oshi said himself, he stated, I don't know what the film's about. <laughs> so, there, <laughs> David hate, it. That. <laughs> so the so director the, himself so that, said that. So the last line just negated the first two things I've said. <laughs> if that's the director, is it? Oshi? Well, I think I think honestly, him saying that it, you know, he lost his faith and stuff. So it is about it is biblical then, and it's yeah, Mm -hmm. it's about losing faith, I guess. Whatever. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like REM losing their religion. Maybe that's the point of nothing happening. Maybe if you're if you're super religious, you know, like a lot of religious people really rely on prayer and you know thinking that there's there's a higher power and something well, that, that is going to come well, that's with just it. The definition and, of faith. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. And when you and when that shit doesn't actually happen, you know, you pray all the time and then nothing happens. Yeah, people lose their faith, right? Yeah, like, I mean that's the whole happen. point of faith to begin with is it's it doesn't really matter what you see with your eyes and your ears or what someone tells you. Yeah. If, if you're a true believer, you have true faith, then that's pretty much a higher. It's just believing without evidence. Mm-hmm. I feel depressed now. Yeah. I just, I get really, I Can get, weird, I, I get weirded out by that. See, cause I'm like a science, pre- like I want them to figure out, like I was just watching ancient aliens the other day and it was, they were talking about, you know, how, the human race was created and they figure it's coming from like this fucking organisms from, from space and shit. And I'm like, this is crazy. This is fucking blowing my mind right now. But you know, Oh, that there is an explanation one? out there. Yeah. There is an explanation out there and it's crazy, man. It's fucking, mm. you watch this shit and it just literally fucks with your head so bad. You're like, that is so possible. Right. And they're like they're working so hard to prove this because they have actually found organisms that have come from space that have, uh, they found on earth and shit and they're just like okay well this life came from somewhere this is fucking they prove that <laughs> that, sh- that. that, that show is good but an even better version is on vice when they show that i can't remember his name but the one rapper dude gets hella high with his friends and they watch that show and they try to <laughs> it, uh, they try to like Jim break Bronson? it down yeah that's him yeah, that's <laughs> like, is funny. Shane, my friend shane showed me that stuff one time is yeah they watch ancient aliens it's funny as fuck oh dude that watching that shit high must just blow your mind dude must be yeah. really cool. You guys Lots ever watched that that drunk history before? I think it's like oh, yeah, it's funny. That shit yeah. is funny as I was. I didn't even know what mm-hmm. it was. I was flipping through the channels one day and I was like, "Drunk history? What the fuck is this?" So I stopped on it. And I was busting a gut within five minutes because I, I can't remember they're talking yeah. about, but I knew so the history of, you, of it. <laughs> it was so, so funny. Who don't know what it is? It's where uh, two like comedians or funny people open up a flat and <laughs> and uh, talk about shit. history. <laughs> but the funny thing is these guys are really do you trash. open up a flat you pop what do you pop open Dude, a flat it's four crack six open flat. packs you know what a six pack looks like it's four yeah you're six not just gonna crack open in a, a fucking hole. cardboard box so how do you open a flat oh my god jesus <laughs> all right what did you rate it carly uh i give it a seven i mean it's visually very uh beautiful it's you know i i kind of rate it like a work of art than a movie but mm. yeah Seven. Alrighty. So yeah, that's uh, Angel's Egg. Moving on to Vampire Hunter D from the same year of 1985. Um, surprisingly, man, this is one I'd never seen. I always knew about this. I know it. I think it has yeah, sequels. I think it's got. It. I saw this on TV as a kid. Actually, I have seen yeah. this. Like I said, I just you know I I never realized I liked anime as much as I did until I started, well, kind of being forced to watch it a little bit. Pretty much all the ones I've reviewed in, like, probably last year have been forced to watch, but uh, force is a bad word. 
I don't want to say paid to watch either. It sounds even worse. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyways. It could be but... like Derek and have to pay us to watch something and then also send us the movie. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm fucking, I was so shitty about that. <laughs> he, paid us, he paid us to watch a movie that he sent us. <laughs> <laughs> please watch it oh my god we're so bad all right there. vampire hunter d a young girl requests the help of a vampire hunter to kill the vampire who has bitten her and thus prevent her from becoming a vampire herself so yep uh this is the style of anime that i was used to growing up this type of stuff uh it's gritty you know this kind of era of anime there's a lot that like the main character in this in this movie, like the vampire hunter, it feels like they really liked the character of uh, the man with no face, basically. Uh, or excuse me, the man with no name, uh, Clint Eastwood's character in like the spaghetti westerns, where it's like the the drifter with the big hat, and you mm. know, because he almost feels like a character out of like one of those spaghetti western type movies because he kind of shows that's up point. I didn't really think of that no dude yeah. I literally Mike that's fucked up I have this written down I said the Vampire Hunter D is essentially Clint Eastwood from the Man With No Name trilogy he's an eternal wanderer yeah he's a drifter he kind of shows up with really no history no, not much of a backstory because when I saw this it reminded me of like Ken Shiro from Fist of the North Star because he's Ken Shiro's not in the same getup as this because this guy even his getup looks like Clint Eastwood from those movies. Yeah, but they yeah, kind of sure. they kind of show up and like kid, you know, the kids, the innocents, kind of innocent people, kind of befriend him immediately, and they have problems that need to be taken care of, and he's kind of like the ultimate good to, to come take care of like the issues in the town and you know as as things unfold you know he just becomes almost like folk hero to yeah the and then and then saving. once he's done his business he moves on it's mm-hmm. he's, exactly he's yeah. fucking clint eastwood it's the eternal roamer you know it's it's crazy i love that shit man that's cool that you brought that up because i literally have it written down yeah, and Almost this one was, word. I think, even more on the nose than other animes just because he looks like it. <laughs> yeah, he does, man. He's got that, uh, I don't want to say trench coat or whatever the fuck they call him, but it's got that whole kind of thing going on. The poncho? On yeah, he does, man. You know, at first I was like, right when they first showed him, I was like, oh, man, it's like Eastwood mixed with fucking Zorro. <laughs> yeah, like when, when, when he was kind of walking up and you get these like, and that's another thing about this era of anime especially because you get it a lot with manga stuff too. It's like there's these long shots of like it'll show him just kind of walking from the distance but it'll just keep showing him approaching approaching and it's like i almost wouldn't have been surprised if like the good bad and the ugly theme didn't like really kick up right <laughs> during that whole time yeah exactly man but yeah i, I really like i, I it think i've seen this on cartoon network or like tbs like tbs used to show anime in the 90s and i just saw vampire you know and like i'm just like oh i'm a horror fan so like uh, I remember watching. It. I don't remember much about it, but I do remember seeing it. I was really young. So what do you think about this one? I like it. I, I think that it's. I like. The, I love the animation. Honestly, like mm-hmm. I just think that it looks cool. It's like smooth but and dark. It just has a very dark look to it. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody looks, you know, kind of badass and. You know, you got the snake bitches, and I, I really dig the look of the vampire hunter D himself. I could have maybe done a little better with the count, the ten thousand year old count. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought he was not the, you know, not the best, but I guess I, maybe I would have preferred more of like a looks like an old dude. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe more of like a Dracula looking type guy or something. Um, but, see, that, yeah. always, that always confuses me about, you know, when you see old vampires like that. It's like, who the fuck changed or turned this guy into a vampire when he was old? Yeah. Right? Because he would have had mm. to have been changed when he was old. Like, you, if you're going to change them, mm. change it when they're young so they can at least have that eternal uselessness, you know? Yeah. Fucking weird. But. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe being 10,000, maybe you do age ever so slightly as a vampire yeah, and depends. since he's ten thousand years old he's like 68 or something <laughs> i think <laughs> they know? actually do say that he's got eternal he's got like etern- i don't know but yeah but i, mean, I would that's not kinda, call that eternal youth <laughs> I, well i mean not a, unless i mean he maintained his age that he was turned at yeah um 
but yeah, I, I, it's kind of weird because there's like, it's not just vampires. There's like a werewolf at the beginning. Um, there's like me, I guess mutants, right? They're like some sort of other don't, is there a title scroll at the beginning or something that explains that? Mm-hmm. Um, there's yeah. like all kind of different shit going on here. Yeah. Well, what it is the, the, they're set in the, in the future. This is a future world, but f- with, and it has monsters from the past Ooh. in it. Mm-hmm. All sorts. Yeah. So the monsters are from the past. Yeah, it's just all, it's basically set in like a, kind of like a post-apocalyptic a, a, world. It's a just lot monsters more left. story in this one than the last. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, well, there's a, a lot bit. of characters. I mean, at the core of it, it's pretty simple and stuff, but yeah. I do like the whole vampire D, um, character himself because he's like he's half he's half human half um vampire himself right they call him yeah, a, a dampier he, he heals himself like he's in that battle with that dude and that dude cheats the fuck out of him by like sh- shifting space and time yeah and then then he hit but then vampire hunter d heals himself so it's like i was like oh shit yeah so yeah it, it's almost like a blade-esque maybe Mm-hmm. Or Blade is a Vampire Hunter D esque. <laughs> it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Vamp- yeah. He's got Hunter he's got B. vampireism in him, but he can live as a human or he can be on the other side too. But he still has to fight his urges and shit though too, right? Because he's mm-hmm. half vampire. Mm-hmm. But he is his goal is to, you know, destroy the vampires because they're the ones that turned him into what he is, kind of thing. So hence I'm roaming around helping out people. But yeah, I really do like the uh the, the look of the monsters and the creatures in this are awesome, man. There's some pretty good gore and shit. People get splattered around or mutants get splattered around and shit. It's awesome. Some pretty good action and shit. Is that Sylvester Stallone, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe what that's they the them after. fuck? Mike, Mike sent me a, uh, another anime called <clears throat> Fist of the North Star and the thumbnail looks like fucking Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> 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 oh, I see that in the chat, yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> So what did you, I guess, what did you guys think overall? I loved it. I, I had seen this when I was pretty young, so I, a lot of the details kind of got lost on me. But um, I I had a blast revisiting it. Like, like you guys mentioned, there's, a, there's more story to this one. Obviously, this one's more of a traditional kind of narrative uh, in a, in a movie kind of format. It's, it's also not too long. I think it's what about 75, 80 minutes. Cause 80 minutes. And that's honestly perfect for it, an anime. Like between it says on the back 70 80, and 80 minutes is what I'm well before for. the credits kick in. It's about 76 minutes. And then the yeah. Kick in. Cause I, I noticed in my little time, uh, you know, the time counter thing that like the credits hit actually when it's like maybe eight, nine minutes. So yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought, um, it was good. There was nothing really too slow. It, the story flowed well. And uh, I just, I, I like the anime style in this. I like that there was just a lot of different creatures and mutants and all sorts of Did you guys watch subbed stuff. or dubbed? I watched dubbed. subbed. I watched the dubbed. You know what? I watched the dubbed too because I just popped my oh, wait, Blu-ray dubbed. in. I, wa- I popped the Blu-ray it's in and just pressed not play. Not difference. No, wait, what? No, I knew. I just like thought I had to think. I screwed them up. They rhyme. Yeah, so, right, I, so I popped the Blu ray in and just pressed play, and it was playing English, and I wasn't even thinking about you it. You fucking I was like, own the Blu ray to this? Yeah, I bought it for this. Oh, for this show, or you already <clears> owned it? No, I bought it for the show. Oh, okay. And I was like, wait a minute. I was like yeah, three quarters the way through. I'm like, wait a minute, this is totally Japanese. It's supposed to be Japanese, but you're watching anime, so you didn't even really realize, right? It's not like you're watching a fucking live yeah, action movie. The, the yeah, because the mouth is going to match up in an anime. Yeah, it totally does. And I was like, oh, okay, whatever. It's not that yeah, big. Yeah, I think, I I would think never anime do that, but... is the one, um, you know, art form where you you don't need the subbed. Like dubbed is fine. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought all the voice acting was okay yeah, in voice, this voice, and. Yeah, voice acting is great. I thought it was really good. Yeah, that's that's the interesting thing about anime uh, as opposed to like uh, actual movies, uh, live action movies is anime dubbing, they tend to get like pretty good voice actors from, it's not like I've seen like tons of anime, but from the anime movies I have seen, Mm -hmm. I'm like, why can't they use this caliber of of, actual movies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so weird because you're right. Like every anime I've ever seen that's been English, I've thought just it it sounds perfect it sounds great but well, yeah movies like, never there's barely yeah. ever a good dub movie man the the voice actors that do the the dc animated movies are fucking excellent like i said mark hamill's all over that shit with you know the joker and stuff but the voice acting is amazing in those things mm-hmm. 
Did you guys notice the music in this? It sounds like Nightmare on Elm Street at first. Yes, I thought I was the only one who thought that. <laughs> no, it's got the first like three or four notes of Nightmare or uh, the theme from the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Mm-hmm. And, and then it changes a little bit, but it's there. It's prevalent. It's noticeable if you're a fan. I thought that was kind of mm. noteworthy. It's pretty trippy. You didn't notice that, JP? Um, I'm a fake no, fan, I, and I, I even noticed. Not. No, I JP never no. notices music in movies. It's so I know. I, I'm not really a. It's like, know, what, like sometimes I do though. Like I was paying <clears> attention <throat> to music in, um, Angel's Egg. Yeah, with something like that, like like this, I tend to notice music more. I'm kind of looking out for it. And well, Angel's um, Egg's not really music. It's more of a. It's more of a. <laughs> droned Doom. out fucking industrial sound. It's kind of like a racer head in a sense. Dude, I was thinking Eraserhead so much while watching this. I know, me That's... too, man. I was like, if this thing was black and white, it was it's an anime Eraserhead. No, that was pretty crazy when like the she was riding the carriage with the doctor, and he like revealed himself to actually be a vampire, and it got all <laughs> awkward. And he's like, oh, I sh- what did he say? Like, I should have def- defiled your young body when, when yeah, I had yeah. hands. I was like, oh shit. It was oh, weird shit. too because then he gets fucking killed, and then she's like kind of upset about it. And I'm like. He just about killed you. Why are you upset yeah. that they just took him out? <laughs> that was kind of weird. <laughs> but yeah, he did. He's like, I, I should have defiled your young body. And I was like, holy <laughs> fuck. I'm like, that is some creepy ass pedophile shit right there. Because she looked pretty fucking young. But Yeah. yeah my, I, I think that that's cultural, man. There's a lot of I, a lot of the animes and shit I've seen. There's like pedo jokes. <laughs> <laughs> almost, almost every female character in anime is like over sexualized in some way i mean yeah, usually like they're, when they're, and, they're, they're and they all look like <laughs> yeah. they're fucking nine yeah um, right it's so and their weird. voices too are just like very yeah. creepy best and sounding yeah. well, shit, the opening to this movie you could this girl's running you see up her skirt like yeah <laughs> you notice that <laughs> you're were, you were getting panty shots on an anime chick nice yeah he was doing the frame by frame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I ain't got time for that bullshit. Um, anyway, uh, what are you guys thinking for ratings on this one? Uh, Carly, you go first. All right. You know, I didn't really say much. I mean, you know, this movie, I think it's pretty straightforward, but um, not really something I would necessarily go back to. So I don't think I'm as um, big on it as you guys. I did give it a decent rating, though, because... Um, I thought it was solid and it did have some good moments in it and good visuals. So um, I would give this a 7.5 out of 10. Man, I I love the visuals in this. I love when, you know, they start battling hum- Vampire Hunter D would be battling one of the mutants and shit like that. It would get real close up. It's, it's a very 80s thing to do when you get real close up like that. And then the background goes all rainbow colored. It fucking reminded uh. me of like He-Man and shit when they would do that. Absolutely love that. I love the battles in this, though. The mutants are excellent. Music's awesome. Really, this is probably something I'm going to revisit quite a bit. I actually really enjoyed the shit out of this. I'm sure my kid will love this, too. I mean, he's kind of, he's getting desensitized to these anime, or these animated films, because I keep showing him all these DC ones, and they're pretty fucking violent, and he's just like, yeah, this is awesome. (laughs) I keep forgetting that they have swearing in them, and I'm like, ah, fuck, I feel bad for doing that, but. Who cares? Yeah, it's just a little bit. But Gotta teach them young. God, he hears me swear all the fucking time. It's bad. I, mean, I got a filthy <laughs> mouth around him sometimes. I forget. I just forget and I start saying some bad shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really, I love the shit out of this, man. Nine out of ten. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, I'm kind of where Carly is. Uh, it didn't blow me away or anything. I, I would like to own it. Honestly, because I, 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 it's weird. I always thought anime was super fucking lame. Like mm-hmm. all the kids that were into it in high school, I just was like, dude, these. No, guys it's are because weird. all the kids were lame. It wasn't the <clears throat> shit that they were watching. I know yeah, a lot honestly, of lame yeah. anime heads too, man. I know some kids that yeah. are super into it, and they're just like, they're those... they look like they don't shower for days. Yeah, and, and they, they just, got like really yeah. bad acne, and they're overweight, and they have like weird hair. <laughs> and people and shit. put mashed potatoes in their anime books when they walk away. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and yeah. to be perfectly honest, a lot of that. I mean, I know it's subjective to say this, but a lot of the anime they they are into is fucking lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> like right. I'm, I'm just being honest because, like, through the years, I tried to like explore, you know, a greater. Uh, scope of anime and a lot of it I just don't 
like just me personally the the anime i do like like we've mentioned akira i love this is the north star that's just i i love it uh this was cool um ghost in the machine like there are th- individual things i like and it's usually stuff that's have you seen wicked city to before? Me specifically. You yeah we, we actually have wicked city on dvd my you know what's funny is when i started dating my wife at the time she somehow she fucking knew about wicked city and she introduced it to me wow and i was like holy fucking shit this is crazy I, and then it made me think well what the fuck else are you into because <laughs> <laughs> yeah that shit's wild but um next next thing you know she's grabbing necromantic films for you to watch like yeah hey, I, I, got, I got a good date movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but like i said most anime that i've ended up liking it's been recommended to me i don't I, it's hard for me to go out and find stuff because yeah. i don't know enough to even know i wouldn't know where to begin searching for like the good stuff you know yeah exactly yeah, yeah i'm pretty much um so yeah i i'm at a 7.5 on this one i think that I think that it's cool. I'm definitely interested in checking out some other stuff, but I want to pump the like not go in full force like every once in a while. Um, I do want to pick up Perfect Blue because that one was really awesome. That's probably my favorite one so far. Um, but yeah, have you so, seen any of the DC animated films? Just the one that that dude gave me, Batman versus Dracula, or something. Nice. It's older. Yeah, yeah, I, I went kind of batshit with them. Yeah. I know. I saw you were doing that. Do you see that video? Oh, they get, Derek gave you one fucking movie, and then all of a sudden you're fucking. I picked up forty of them. Deep in... <laughs> well, I watched. Oh my god. Yeah, I love them, dude. I fucking. My kids 40. actually watch more than I have. I've watched probably like fifteen of them or something, and he's probably watched almost all of them. But what's the best one you've seen so far? Oh shit, dude, man. Um, I don't know, man. There's some. Oh, there's so many good ones. The Joker well, one is really awesome. Um, actually, you know killing the one, joke, is that yeah, it? the ki- killing joke. Yeah, it's awesome. Because um, that was like it's fucking hard. Like it's like a hard R too, right? Mm-hmm. Honestly, man, the new Batman vs Ninja Turtles one is is fantastic. <laughs> I, I threw that on and I I saw like the first fifteen minutes and I it was really good. Yeah. I can't I, I I can't remember why I had to like stop watching it. I just haven't had a chance to go back. But I was like actually like entertained. It, it brought me back to like childhood. The kind of, that yeah. kind of stuff I was watching growing up. All right, so what are you rating it, Mike? Uh, I'm gonna give it a eight because I think, you know, I think this is like a highly probably a, a one you could show to like more people. Obviously, over Angels of Hig, um, it's pretty straightforward story. I think uh, it's a lot of good visuals it's you know it's a vampire hunter killing shit and saving the town um so yeah i think it has a rewatchability for people that enjoy this kind of thing so yeah uh there you go all right um that's it (laughs) that's that's yeah that's gonna do it for the the return without jeremy (laughs) And speaking of that, that's usually where he kicks in right now and then says some stupid shit that no one ever fucking listens to. So, mm-hmm. if JP, if you want to take us out. Yeah. Um, so, first of all, let me thank my guest, our guest, for coming on. Mike, you can check out his shows uh, like Fresh Cuts. What's your next episode of Fresh Cuts? Uh, well, we just did the one cut of the dead. So, I check think. Check that out. Yeah, it should be up by the time you're here in this episode, definitely. And then what's up with No More Room in Hell? Uh, we just released episode 13 where it was Derek's pick or Derek's turn to do the picks. And we did uh, uh, Without a Warning or also known as It Came Without Warning and then The Deadly Spawn. Sweet. Love Deadly Spawn. Um, you have Burning for Springwood, which is the Elm Street series podcast um what theme warriors you still doing that yep theme warriors monthly so it's the only downside to monthly shows is like if you if you have to push it back it's like (laughs) yeah it it means there's a lot of time between each episode but we do have our next episode our next episode is uh it's funny that i should say is uh american movies based off foreign tv shows and i picked the american the american uh live action fist of the north star movie that came out in the early 90s it's fucking hmm. ridiculous oh that's funny yeah. uh any other shows you have 
Uh, I, <laughs> I couldn't think about it. But, but you were I think you got better. everything. God, okay, cool. I'm good at this. Better than Jeremy. Uh, Carly, uh, I know you have cinema celluloid. Is that what it's called? Celluloid dissection. Celluloid Thank dissection. <laughs> and, oh, I, don't, uh, I don't know why I didn't let Carly answer that. <laughs> that is with Derek. And you guys are, what do you guys got coming up with that? Um, our next show, we're supposed to cover Spider Baby. And nice. we're supposed to record, I believe, a. Uh, 21st or somewhere around there so that should be coming up here okay awesome um and you have movie versus movie with austin yes um and with that one we're gonna do neon demon versus starry eyes which will also be i think recording maybe next week so yeah that's a good pair i like that uh then you also have netflix and chill which we just did the fury furies furries or aka the furries if you're fucking dumb like us and call it that the whole entire episode. <laughs> um, Let's get what's your going to be your March 2020 episode of Netflix and show. Uh, shut up. Um, no, we back. we're we back. doing we we bet we're doing four episodes this month. So eat a dick. Yeah, we're going big. Um, yeah, we don't know what we're doing next because uh, there's kind of a gap between Shutter releases. Maybe we'll check out one of the Netflix ones that came out. It's like a whole flat of episodes you're releasing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I would say we're do- we're covering the Creep Show series as it as it comes out. Uh, and then, do you have any other podcasts? I can't remember what all you do. No, I don't. I mean, I have. Um, I'm going to be on the Who Will Survive podcast. Um, believe that my episode comes out next week. I, it's already pre-recorded, so <clears throat> there's that. Um, and that we'll be covering Hell Knight and the guests, and that was a fun one. So that's coming up. But other than that, I have nothing else going on. Okay. And uh, we will maybe be back next week, I think. Maybe. I don't know for sure. Um, well, I don't know. We we never have any communication. We don't really ever talk. So <laughs> who fucking knows if we're coming back next week or not? So. Yeah. Well, I'm sitting there asking you guys if we're still doing Italian Horror Month, and nobody answers me. I of course we're still doing them. Italian Horror Month. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> okay. this, this fucking guy. Um, yeah, pretty sure we need to do a Halloween episode this month too. So, um, probably post something about that soon. Well, I want to be uh, recording uh, every week until the new year. So sure. this fucking guy <clears throat> all of a sudden <throat> has time to record podcasts. Yeah. Well, <laughs> fuck. All right. I'm down. I'm dizzy down. So, so let's do that. I don't know what um, we're doing next week. I don't think we have, do we have any Patreon main reviews or anything that no, we could just nothing okay. main reviews right now? I will. Uh, we could pick something. Uh, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll and then, out. <clears throat> uh, yeah, we'll see if Jeremy comes back next week. Um, not hundred percent sure yet. And then also, uh, if you guys know where to follow us, obviously patreoncom slash 22 shots podcast. Um, another thing that I wanted to shout out at the beginning, but I totally forgot. I created this thing called Flick Chat. It's essentially an app for podcasters. It's actually really cool. I haven't been too active yet, but Podcast Under the Stairs turned me on to it. It's brand new. It like just came out. And they're very um, – the people who run it are like communicating with podcast hosts to try to like build the, the app and stuff like that. So that's really cool, uh, asking us for feedback and stuff. But it's basically like almost like a forum type thing. Like we can make posts and you guys can like – talk and respond to stuff and and different things like that plus you can actually play our episodes from inside the app automatically you don't have to download them or anything you could stream them from inside the app which is really neat um also you know check out all the other places where our episodes are and you know uh it should be i'm happy to be back so that's that's it all right guys um Mike Carly, thanks once again for coming on. You guys are awesome. Welcome back anytime. And uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, no cool. problem, man. No problem. I'm ready for that nightmare retrospective. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we should actually we should really work on making a time for that, and then we'll just do it, man. Just do it. I don't know, buddy. Next year. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> next year, it's likely now. <laughs> well, no, it's not happening. Yeah, in the next. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're too busy coming up here. So, um, 2020. Nightmare. Maybe we'll do the final yeah. one for all you. That's, that's only a couple months away. And all right. I have to get up in about four hours, so I'll see you guys on the flip side. All right, guys. Deuces. Peace. Peace.
yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I got, time. dude, you know, funny thing is my beer fridge down here is like overpacked <laughs> and I'm like, I haven't drank in a month. Fuck. Well, shouldn't you be turning those in for recycling? Cause well, they're all empty. I was fucking, I had like half a fridge full. My uncle comes over who's the, he's the fucking uh, parent engineer at the brewery. And he comes over with a fucking flat and a half of beer. I'm like, fuck, dude. <laughs> the fuck is a flat? 20, a 24 pack. Uh, <laughs> you know what we call that? A and 24 a, pack. <laughs> yeah, so, do, so do we, but, you know, the a fucking, fucking ri- flat. Because it, it literally comes in a fucking flat case. Do you, do you call a 12 pack a half flat? No. <laughs> call, call it a case. Don't you guys call 24 packs cases, though? Do you, do you call a six pack yeah. a quarter flat? <laughs> No, we call them six. Pa- and it's fucking. It's funny again because everybody says the same shit about you guys. If you, if you put the twenty four pack on its side, is an upright flat. <laughs> I love how you guys are just strictly laughing at yourself. It's so amazing. I it's think so everyone's awesome. laughing. But like no. <laughs> oh fuck! Twenty four packs. If we called our shit flats, you could laugh at it too. <laughs> Fucking fifths and shit. Who the fuck talks like that? That's ridiculous. Say a fucking what? say a fucking Mickey and a fucking You're twenty a quarter flats. What are you talking about? I didn't say anything about a quarter flat. Now you're just making shit up. Twenty four pack. Who the fuck says that? Uh, the box itself says it. Yeah, it does. So call it, it a says fucking, fucking twenty four pack right on the box. Case flat. Yeah. I'll I'll check next time. I swear the box does not say, "Hey, this is a flat of beer." It should. I'll, I'll double, it should I'll because check. that's way cooler than saying twenty-four pack. Hey, this is a flat of beer. I I don't check out with my beer, and he's like, I "Oh, just, got yourself I a flat of beer." Text along the bottom of the box, like, "Hey, comma, this is a flat of beer." You know what? Now now when I think about like, it, you guys, you guys out. probably don't have fucking flats like that. You guys, you guys actually don't have beer that comes in cases like that. That's why. Cases is like what? Flat? It's open. Dude, the can sit in the fucking box. It's not covered. Uh, That's like why it's called a like, flat, because it's a fucking flat box. Oh, yeah, we have a word for that. It's a crate. You mean? Not a no. fucking flat. No. <laughs> that is, how could you call cardboard a crate? A fucking egg crate, isn't that what that's called? No. You fucking jerk. No. Oh man, you guys are fucking. It is man. an egg. There are egg crates. An egg carton, egg crate. We don't call it an egg flat. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in a in a crate now is a flat. And uh, go to the grocery store to do some flat shopping. <laughs>